Welcome to Side B, motherfuckers. Welcome to Side B, motherfuckers. Hey, one goal, one thing, one move, and that shit don't change. It's hurt. Real niggas do real fucking things. Real niggas do. Hey, there's only one goal, one thing, one move, and that shit don't change. And it's hurt. Real niggas do real fucking things. Real niggas do real fucking things. All right. I'ma keep a general just like the army. Most real niggas know most niggas phony. Your shadow got your back, huh? Just like your homie. That's why shady niggas will harm thee. Just act Caesar. Brutus got him and caught him before his last breather. If that don't make you believe us, then you'll learn. Honesty is a quality that will burn, but it's cool. And trust is a quality you will earn. You a fool if you take you learn all of the rules. Imitate and imitation, and they call it. They cool. I know a little bit, but go ahead and call me a fool. While you sprinkle sugar on shit and you calling it food. See, I'm just trying to groove, and you standing on the wall with your hands on your balls, making crab claws move. Trying to bonk at a dog, but I don't bonk. I just fall back till you think you winning, but you lost enough again. So, um, we getting haircuts out here, huh, man? That, that was oh, no, I, I come on here. Oh, all right, I'm about to say. I, 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 mean, it's not, it's not I, 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 I just saw, I just saw, I saw skin on you. I was like, wait, how the fuck does he have skin? Yeah, where's the skin? Where, how? Where's that? You motherfucker. Okay, man, y'all niggas better invest in some clippers, man. Man, I'll wait. I'm not like that. Better be like that and fuck yourself up, man. I'll wait. Plus, plus, I was gonna grow my hair out anyway, so I ain't tripping. Like, yeah, you can go anyway. I got clippers at the house, and I was like. We in quarantine, I ain't seen nobody. I'm gonna just try it out. If I fuck it up, I just wear a hat all the time. It's cool. It's not like you're gonna see a whole bunch of people. But, like, I mean, I think it came on okay, but you know. Straight, man. You know. I won't get. I just want. If I could just learn how to line myself, that'd just be the most clutch. See, that's what I don't have, man. So I'll I be going out with no, with no lining. So I still gotta wear a hat even if I. Have a <laughs> <fresh. laughs> I, I got the 80s fresh, baby. I'm so tripped out that they just started doing linings like in the early 90s. That's yeah. funny to me. Yeah. They was like, linings? Listen, as long as you hair look neat and comb, that's all that matters. It's just funny, son. It's like, Linus no. is a style. But it just felt like a style like I always remember. I ain't know. I feel like that style is the freshest. I don't see it. But, no, but, I, but no, but I think I do remember when I was, but when I was really young, my grandpa was cutting my hair, so he didn't give me no liners anyway. Mm -hmm. So I ain't think about it like, Oh, I ain't getting no lining. I mean, I'm talking about so you no know, fucking lining. That That's what I'm saying. But no, they said it. I don't know who invented it. It got. It started like that whole New Jack Swing era. Them niggas started like getting get, made the lining real popular. It's really late '80s, early '90s shit. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Brown, you know, all them niggas was on like, that line of shit. By the time you get to Bobby Brown solo, like people was getting. They was already on it. Yeah. But that whole era, cause you could you could see the change, the new edition. They didn't have lines when it was Lil. Right. Then he got a little older and you started to see, wait, Linus came in school. At some point, bro, <laughs> they came in style. Somebody, so who they went to, though? Who was the like, ball that said, let me geometrically hook your shit up, dog? Who knows, dog? Like, I'm about to that, make that's that's a moment in black history that should be freaking highlighted. The man who, you know, first wait, created man, If I get a Trump history story about that, I'll take it. As Maybe they somebody say, already checked on it. I'm sure somebody. I'm gonna like, Google who wanted, yeah. started the taper fade. The edge, <laughs> not the tape, but that's a fade. Like we call it linings, but they be calling it edge yeah, ups yeah, other places. Ups. Really? Service class. Why? Well, I don't know why. Uh, okay, that didn't come up. Uh, how to edge up at? No, 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 no. I wonder who started it. They don't even have it. Origins, try the origin, origin unknown. Uh, Some uh, black man. Some up. origin. Uh, Damn, sure when the white man would get their haircut. A shape up, also called a lineup or H edge up, is a hairstyle that involves cutting along the natural hairline to make it straight. Shape ups or edge ups are basically the fundamental outline for haircuts today. The haircut grew in popularity during the 1980s, mm -hmm. typically with those who have Afro texture. Black people, niggas, see that? Look at y'all trying too hard. Hair. No, typically we started this what shit. Did they say? Typically with those who have Afro textured hair. That's a stupid sentence. Nigga, black people started that. Yeah, just say black people. Black people started that. <laughs> <laughs> Edge ups are typically found among men and often on women with short hair. But, then, but tell me the history. Who started it? During the 70s in the disco era, most African Americans sporting Afro was there. Blah, 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 blah. So Leroy James. Da, 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 da. Most people well, were cut. Da, 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 da. Barbershop. 
Most people will cut their afros off and clean in search of something clean and more clean and neat when the style faded. When this happened, that's when people began to take notice and advantage of the newfound look. The shape up was first introduced into the African American community into the, in the late 1980s, around the time the mid 80s happened to be on the horizon. Barbers had begun implementing the new trend while cutting hair. Due to the impact of influential hip hop artists such as Eric B. and Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, and much more, the style of hip hop high top fade with the shape up began to become more and more requested. So somewhere around the 80s, yeah, in the 80s. some motherfuckers started doing it. Somewhere in Brooklyn, they was like, say, son, how about we, how about we cut your fro to the sides off? I'm not going to give it to New York. We're going to just leave it like up there. Because I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that's of the opinion that like... All that shit didn't have to... Like, you know, no, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's you know what they say, it's, it's a, a assembly of things that come together to make something happen. So like even if like you can trace, okay, this might have been the first person to make it popular or the first person that got the light for it. They got other people that might have been doing it that never got shine or other people that might have been, you know. So, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint when something first started, but you know, like it might have got popular somewhere. But like 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 freestyling. I refuse for you to tell me that the first person to ever freestyle was in Brooklyn, for instance. You can't is it possible? Not ever. I feel like that's something that I mean, that's somewhere, right? I mean, I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if it just like just in terms of like raw, raw hip hop. No, I'm just yeah. saying, saying in terms of humanity, dog. I mean, like we we've been yeah. having poets since so, forever. So, so you can't. Can, I'm not like the old poets that used to do them freaking in the in the, in the juke joints. And oh, shit. just like just improvisation in of the, of rhyme. General, yeah. yeah and, but that's what I'm saying. But that's what ancient. Free, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But that shit needed that other shit to build on this thing. Yeah. Like oftentimes we be like, oh, this started here, and I'm like, whoa. You can probably trace shit other places. You ain't gonna yeah. tell me that the first nigga freestyling and improv and rhyming or like was no. with some nigga in New York. I'm no. going to show people all over the world I mean, where like I, I'm a ball and maul and saw and doll so rhyming and doing their thing just to play around. Is too, is whoever, too old. whoever did the first word dropped the first rhyme. <laughs> he said freestyle is started with the first less. the first talker, the first person to speak. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If not him, the first few dog. The one nigga was like, "Where you at? Around the back." Uh huh. Bars. And then from then on, nigga was like, "We got this." Cause you're right. This shit is age old, son. This shit is age old. But I think that. I mean, um, not even just that it's age old. I'm, all I'm saying is, it takes a multiple forms of stimuli that builds up. You know what I'm saying for a thing to be. I think the only thing you can almost kind of say, and I have to make in bold, almost like maybe you could say like, the first you know rap. Freestyle, like rap as we understand it currently, might have originated somewhere close to the East Coast. I wouldn't say right. that for the mere fact that we created jazz. I'm not saying that like that's what it is. No, I'm, I'm not. I know. I know you said a, almost, but my first no. I know you said almost, but my first thought would be, but New Orleans had jazz, and that's mm -hmm. freestyle instruments, and them dudes would always skit and scat. You know what I'm saying? So then my mind would go, well, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I mean, would, it's like going back to the drums. Like we could take this show back to Africa. I don't, want, I don't want to go all the way back to Africa, but you get what I'm saying? It's like New York, because New York has almost trained all of us to give them all the shine all the time. And I'm like, wait a minute, not always. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You can't have a Hall of Renaissance without New Orleans, nigga. I'm just saying, they, <laughs> they, they, made things, they made things pop. They might have had this most popular, they might have made it pop. Because, I mean, that's the biggest city, that's the most popular city in our fucking country. So, made it popular, I'll give you that. But, originate, or, or, Originated. But wait a minute. If like certain things get originated like in China and all that, why couldn't that just originate in New York? I'm not saying it couldn't originate in New York. I'm saying it's we always we always that is the default answer to this. New York created rapping. And I'm like I don't think that's I think, true. I think, and that's I, what I, I'm I think saying. Rapping, I think New York created hip hop. Whatever you want to call hip hop, they they may have given it a name. But in what I'm saying is in the conventional sense, maybe. May, I feel like they made it like they made it famous or popular. But you ain't gonna get me to believe that black people all over the country, that people wasn't already doing like we say with G Nice. They probably didn't have a name for it. They might have had a name for it. You know what I'm saying? But I, expressing itself some kind of art. See what I'm that's that's my point. I, I feel like as black people, like that, in some as, kind of way. I mean as that's what I'm saying. As black people, black people make art. Black people do things. Such as DJ, who who who, who might have so made it may may have gotten famous for it in '85, but that don't mean that they didn't have DJs in Mississippi all the way up to Philadelphia mm -hmm. doing something similar before it caught I mean, on I'm, I'm in sure, New I'm York. Sure, I'm sure there was somebody in the South, like before, like like you said before, the New York niggas was doing it. Like I'm sure there was somebody in the South that was doing something like to their own culture. Yeah, that was in its own form of hip hop, but it wasn't hip hop or called at the time. Somebody yeah. else name it. Or just it. some Marketing. prodigy, like even just some I mean, dude at his fucking house that might have heard heard rap 
some way you and may, he can he can rap. You know what the five basic those in. the five elements of hip hop are seen everywhere. So if that's the, if that's being the case, you dig? Then yes, I think they what they did is like, like they took all five elements, combined them, gave them a name, and, and structured it, and saying this is what it is. I mean, whenever you look at the documentaries that break down how it came about, of course it's all the organic thing, and we have all these things documented. I'm just saying, like it's just highly it's just highly possible to me that even though all that was going on and people were doing that, we had poets over here, we had poets over there, we had people, you know. Doing it in the, in their own way at the same time, and you know what the thing I think the thing about New York it gets a lot of shine because at the time a lot of things were happening. Now it's definitely a big city, but there's also a city like that was in the north where a lot of things in the south was kept back due to its falls with race, racism and segregation. And generally speaking, on the east coast, it's faster and like not only the biggest city, they're the most powerful city. So even if there was some podunk nigga in Mississippi spitting his heart out. It wasn't gonna get over there. Nah, it's a fucking numbers game. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it took a long time for Muddy Waters to get on from out the fucking plantation, dog, until until like a major stream of people. See, and that, that's all I'm saying, bro. But, and that's why they, you know, that's what goes back to uh, our, our days of now, where we always talking about how New York niggas be jacking the slang, like how they be saying we can't rap or shit like that, but be jacking our style from the south, or, or can't, or can't, um, Come a little, little, or like, or can't little. admit to the fact that um we a powerhouse in some sense. I remember ATL. I remember ATL. I remember um, Outkast when they first won that award. I think it was the Source Awards, and them niggas was like, you know, the South got something to say. The whole wait, freeze right quick, because I don't want you to stop your thought because we were still recording. I want you to bring it down a little bit so it's not as godlike. All right, I gotta bring the whole thing down. Just a little bit. Just tell me where to stop. Well, tell me where to go. I like it right here. I think that's a cool spot. I got three upon my side and three upon the inside. That's the bad wood. I gotta sit up on this fucking couch. Alright, y'all good? Yep, I'm good. I'm gonna ask y'all something about soap in a minute too. Alright, finish your thought, my G. You talking about what what Outcast was saying about. Yeah, uh, about like, so that when I think it was the Social Wars when they won, um, and niggas was kind of getting booze and shit, and it was like, man, the South got something to say. I've been thinking in my mind back then, like, dog, y'all just, like, a lot of times knew we had the juice, you dig? You just never wanted to give us our props when you really, when we was able to show it. Because back then, it was it was hell from us to show it, even though I think we, like you see, we were doing it. It's a mix, because the thing is, they always look down on us. That's what I was about to say. You know say. what I'm That's saying? Just the South in general. They always, always look down on us, G. Yeah. So it's not even, even, they didn't even think we were even, could even, was even capable. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, that was the hardest thing about getting our music even over there for, like, years. You hear chatter about, like, on that level now with people like especially like from the west coast and like upper fucking new york like they still kind of like look at people from the south as like kind of like slow on some shit but it's gotten better it's gotten better but it used but to be it's, horrible it's like still a sentiment they though. can't help it you know yeah. <laughs> they, they can't yeah. help it. it's they part of their it. culture to kind of look down on yeah, the well, south well, well, we took that, over hip hop we took their, the their shit because <laughs> it's been been run by the south for at least two decades now so no, it's no, like, no, I'm just saying. But that, but be, that, that, that part door? of that thinking can suck my dick. Yeah, it can. That part can. But that's the thing. But that part, and, that, and you know what? I just thought about that too. When I'm talking about the origins, we could have easily been doing hip hop even before them. But we weren't going to get no props from it because that's just them dumb southerners. Right. You know what I mean? Because if it don't sound like how theirs sounded, just like our music never sound like theirs sounded, they're going to just write it off. But that don't mean right. that we weren't doing hip hop because it took a long time for sub, quote unquote southern hip hop to be considered hip hop, G. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like for real. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So it just it's like it's like, just interesting. We, we, calling us we like actually kind of like witnessed it live when they kind of like finally gave us. We watched the rise. Time. Yeah, we watched the rise of Southern hip hop. Because they only could give so many. Like, because they they'll be like, okay, well, I like this person. I be like that person. Well, yeah, I'm saying they, they, they were. Named we got too like many this, names. We got though. Oh, you like so you like UGK. So you like A Ball and JG. So you like Outkast. So you like Ti. So you like you like, like after a minute. Oh, so you like the South then, nigga? You like Scarface? Yeah. You like Goody Mob? What that? Nigga, you like you Cash Money, you like No Limit. You really did watch the South Rise from every genre. I remember Lil Flip and them niggas was really taking over. I'm like Lil no, Flip. No Limit by itself was like half a Southern hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> Just by their fucking roster alone, though. You didn't name like half I a mean, fucking people. I mean, when you when you when you jump, <laughs> nigga, 38 albums, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> all in the same month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but when you jump from when you jump from Uncle Luke and them in Miami and Florida and shit. Trick Daddy and all them. Mm -hmm. 
Then you jump to Three Six Mafia and all them. Mm-hmm. Then you jump to like we say Outkast and the countless motherfuckers in Atlanta before the before the little John before the little John era. Yeah, before Crunk and Snap. I mean the spitters that came out of Atlanta before all that. And then like you say, then you taking no limited cash money. I mean the South. Bro, the South was doing numbers at a point. Numbers, we, like they couldn't, they could not deny it. As as much of a New Orleans nigga I am, and as much as I, you know, don't have the best opinion about Atlanta, I do give ATL all they props when it comes to the fucking music culture that they like put on a scene. Like well, all fucking credit is when the two thousands hit. Yeah, right. I forgot that I forgot y'all Texas that y'all had a great grade. Like it was yeah, like, yeah, Texas, 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 like yeah, all the states that right. yeah. yeah. started yeah. popping. Right. Right. Like, all the states like, at a point started popping. Thing. Thing. But the thing yeah, I remember even uh, Alabama had some niggas Dude, coming out of in yep. Arkansas. They all had a little hit. Right. But one thing about Atlanta, Atlanta was one because it's such a big spot. It was one of the first spots that East Coast and West Coast most of their that they would give they would they gave Atlanta artists respect before they gave. Other artists in the South respect. Somebody Atlanta they're fucking size queens. Yo, I think also Atlanta always been like a special place, like a like uh like Switzerland for black folks. Like it's like it's always it's been a safe haven and it's looked at. And Texas, cause they cause they mm, fucked with Texas Scarface too. too back in the day on the East Coast and shit. You know I what I'm saying? In, in the West Coast, they fucked with us hard on that on that uh, no limit. It shit. really took no but I mean no limit came after these people. You know what I mean? Like Jay Prince had a little mm-hmm. run with Texas before Master mm-hmm. P came True. through. You know Bumpy what I mean? So, so right, I can't. We can't ignore that Atlanta, that Georgia, and Texas like was putting us out on the map. It's just like when P came through in Miami, yeah. When well, of course, Miami is the reason Luke. The reason we got parental advisory stickers. Sure. That sure. is just history. Niggas need to respect Luke. Son. <laughs> Niggas need to respect. He put in Luke. work, dog. Luke's put in some work, dude. Don't like, know, he, his work. I hundred percent agree. But that law case suit, that law, that suit he had, where from like getting your lyrics to be able to be heard, mm. dog, uncensored, son. Mm-hmm. That shit right there, if he would have not won that, Change that would have changed anything about how we're looking at hip hop right now, mm-hmm. dog. We'd have, it would have been a bunch of fights. We would have been talking about history differently. Well, I think the magic of human beings is this. Even if he would have lost that, it would have just taken longer. But some other rap, like, Someone would've you can't on. keep us down. Yeah. If you just look at evolution. At some point, you know what I mean? No slave gonna stay no slave. Yeah. No, you know what I mean? Like, but, uh, nigga, at a point, people like, will rebel. Bitch, at the era of hip-hop, we gotta listen to back then. Be like, yeah, so remember, when I remember like the 90s when niggas just couldn't curse and all they hip-hop sounded like this? I could have. I don't know. I mean, if you just look at that whole bubble of the early 90s when they tried, when they were still figuring things like that out. Because mm-hmm. you got Uncle Luke, you got MWA, <laughs> and that's yeah. a whole other headache for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got and Ice T. When Gangsta Ice T, came bitch. On the See, that was already like, we don't like that hip hop shit. Bro, Ice T made, made, made hurt their feelings. Music came, no, dog. Like, that gangsta was like music. a whole other thing. Like, that was a whole separate thing from like hip hop in general. Like, that was like Gangsta rap. music? West the West, yes, bro. I like that shit, dog. They didn't, dog. They, at, at one point, uh, they all started liking hip hop a little Little big, they was like, okay, mm. they rapping about Adidas and all, you know, you know, hard times, but and you know, they even talking about drugs, but not like nah, that. Nah, man, no. hip hop always had an upward battle, my nigga. I'm Did, sorry. You no, know, I ain't gonna say it didn't have an upward battle. It, like hip hop always fought, but I'm saying once a nigga got like, once you see like, okay, Run DMC is doing a, a cross with fucking um, the people that may walk this way. No, I understand what you're saying. Hip hop started getting commercial things happening, but it was it, the '90s was a very interesting time because it was happening at the same time. Right. See what I'm saying? It's like, like I remember in '88, '89 when NWA dropped right before the '90s hit, and like that's the introduction to the '90s. It's like it's like welcome. It's like what telling white folks, this was the '90s about to look for y'all. You know what I'm saying? We started off with this nigga shit, straight gangster, all in your face. I don't give a fuck how you feel. But they still had commercial rap then too. That's the funny I mean, part. Yeah, it is, it's like yeah. it, it was it was almost hypocritical in a way at times because they started they, they started dabbling and trying to commercialize it while yeah. at the same time demonizing it. That it was, was the weirdest thing. Time. It was a very weird time. Like between eighty eight and like ninety two, like the music culture, <laughs> like we were moving away from like all the rock and like eighties pop and all that shit into this new rap shit. Mm-hmm. Like it was like a real shift. A real shift, dog. You felt and it's like it, it. They didn't know what to do. Really, they didn't know what to do. Nobody knew what to do. It was like, what the fuck is this shit? And I like, think I'm a kid straight of hip hop, so it's like that's all I grew up knowing. So I can only imagine if you're old enough to see hip hop really come in. Because yeah. I'm, you know, what I'm saying like I like by the time I'm cognitive of music, hip hop. <laughs> that's what it is. It's just yeah. rap, nigga. So like that had to be trippy to just watch it. Like what's like, this? Because like early, they was hating at first. Yeah, they was. But like even like the hip hop of the early '80s, like. It was very like party. Yeah, it was very corny. I could, I could party also say. Party all the time. It was either party a party or a message. Time. Yeah, you know it was, what I'm saying? Yeah. It didn't even get to it's like, 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 like,
But right. niggas out there. No. Yeah. no, 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 no. Stop, stop right there. That's one of the first songs to have a message. For the longest, it was uh, part of the message. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's what that was one of those yeah. songs that inspired right. a lot of rappers to know. Oh, we don't have to just make party songs. Yeah, because for the it was right. years oh, of party music. Party right. Right. Like nobody was making yeah. messages. G, it yeah. was just party. It but was, son uh, came with the message, dog, did, and then niggas did. was like, whoa. Nigga did. He didn't say you something. Can, he was like, like, "Whoa, you can yeah. rap about other shit," yeah. and that started something. My I favorite. don't want to run over that. I got like, I got like, I was like, "Wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not giving that song his respect." That, that, that giving it his respect, niggas wasn't rapping about broken glass everywhere. Yeah, it's like, come on, you saw it. Like they just don't care. No, I got my hand on the gun because they got me on the run. It was very cookie, cookie cutter. Oh no, it was cookie cutter, but that's one of the first ones that took it out of cookie cutterness. Real talk, it was at the time the rawest thing added of its time. Time because you gotta think about it at that time, my nigga. If you uh, if you got Beastie Boys, Run DMC, and MC Hammer, right. you got this nigga with a cut off in the middle of the street, broken glass everywhere. Right. You looking like, oh, this nigga real, right? Yeah, here. That ain't about it. <laughs> 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 Dog. Like oh, I said again, man. I repeat again, my favorite line from that song, dog. And like I and the thing is I heard this line used before, but I didn't know it come from that song. And I heard the message before many times, but like it's that fucking they, I got my hand on the gun because they got me on a run. I was like, man, dog, you really gonna put that out there on in the 80s like that? You gonna tell the people that you got your hand on the gun? Like, like, they were being 90s. very ballsy for the time. Yeah, sir. No, that's the 80s, right? It's like 88, 90, yeah. 89 ish. I think, yeah. I think it's like 80, 80. even 87, 80. You feel like, me? But like, might be. But what I'm about to say, what I was about to say, what I was about to say. But it's just interesting seeing the evolutions too because then you got a nigga like, uh, like you got the you got the you got the cocaine raps that start coming. You got the Big Daddy Kane's and shit. Mm-hmm. But then you got any like Rakim come through. Mm-hmm. The thing with Big Daddy Kane and Rakim is such a funny era because like you got one nigga who's like a smooth rapper with some nice flow. It's different. He's new. Both of them were. But Rakim different. comes with yes. like another flow that's but, like a. But neither of them are yelling because remember a lot of niggas are still yelling. Yeah, a lot of niggas are. We all like the party hard, Rakim. Yeah, Look at a lot of old yeah. Kara's one shit. That niggas he spits. Yeah. Oh shit, man, he's yelling his he ass. Like, ah. Calm down, Kara. Yeah. Fuck, nigga. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the style. I'm making you weak. Fuck school. Oh, <laughs> that was the style. Even he read my positive shit. Up. <laughs> Well, like, yeah. Rakim was so smooth, and he came with metaphors, and that was like, and once again, another shift yeah, within the like culture. Another shift. Mm-hmm. You feel me? This, this man's spitting some, he, spit, he got bars and shit. He, yeah, like, this thing. bars like, on another level. Like, he created right? bars almost. Like, he's one of them, because they got a lot of other underground. Because once again, it's the mm-hmm. stimuli. Rakim was a nigga that made it big, but again, they had an underground even I, then. Yeah, but I, I was just about to say, though, there was a whole underground scene, like, where all that shit was breeding at in the first fucking place. Like, he wasn't the Forming only the one dropping bars. He's dropping bars with other warriors a down warrior. there. Yeah, you know? man. He just like, he mainly stood out because of his voice. But yeah. like, and again, a bunch of fucking um copycats. That's for the longest everybody. The rumor was that he ghost wrote summertime for Will because Will mm-hmm. took the Rock Kim flow. And right, the flow is just huh. so. Think evident. about summertime the flow. flow. Is so yeah, yeah. Sound like Rock Kim. That do sound like a lot. He like took the Rock Kim. I don't think about that. It's, it's, it's so evident, dog. Summer, summer, That's interesting. Because that does nothing like how Will Smith ever flowed every day. You can almost say that's a direct. Direct uh, copy of Rakim style, dog. Yeah. Like that's very, um, cause that's too specific. Yeah, like, but like the thing about Will Smith is he writes his own raps. So yes. I mean, all props to Will. Right. Like, but yeah, to take but you ain't gonna tell will. me that you didn't. Yeah, at least you didn't bite that flow. Flow. You didn't, you didn't have to bite the lyrics, <laughs> right, dog. You took the flow. That flow and, and it's a classic flow. song. Mm-hmm. To this Still, day, to hopefully, day. hopefully, Rakim passed you on it. It's like, yes, you can use this. You can use this cadence. Yeah, maybe, probably, maybe not. not. Maybe in post. Maybe in years later, yeah, they probably years. cross paths. Like, I, I see you, Will. He's like, I saw you, Rakim. <laughs> 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 I, I had to be. Thank, yeah, you, yeah. thank you so much. You know what I mean? Dude. But he did. I mean, fuck if you're gonna take it, at least make a lifetime classic with it, right? It, you know, that's my thing too. If you're gonna bite me, make it classic. Yeah. If you're gonna bite me, make it classic. Make it classic, please. I like that your boy Will song that he gave props to Will. Oh, that recent song. Yeah. Oh, uh, that video. Uh, who was it from? Damn. I don't know what you're talking about. Jonah Lucas? Yeah, you go. Yeah. Jonah Lucas made uh, that fire ass video uh, big up. Damn, it became like 1982. 82, even further back. Message, yeah. yeah. Okay. Damn. Well, it created like. Boom, 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 dog. A lot of a lot of the rappers that came later with like so, lyrical so you, lyrics. So you can say that that's early rap. That's early rap. But that's he's the right. only cat that was on it. Like, oh, he's one of, because he's the only. He's one of the few. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Because the group he was with wasn't do that. Their first hits wasn't that. He almost went on his own, like, and did that. But one. then, then we also got to talk about like as we going back to the ain't that Mel scene. B? Uh, what's his name? 
Oh, good one. What you saying? Melly Mel. Melly Mel. There we go. So like, man. if we want to talk about the underground scene again, like we gotta talk about when the niggas used to battle rap each other in the first underground battle rap right. scene, dog. Exactly. Cause I remember we're looking at shit, especially with the shows like uh, that's on Hip Hop Evolution, all that. But even before that, I saw tapes where niggas was battle rapping and niggas was talking about like how I'm gonna kick well, your we're ass. We're talking about two different things. But, I hear you keep but I'm going. just saying like we talking about rap. And talking about how rap, in a sense, like, that's another No, I'm talking rap. about the evolution of hip-hop becoming mainstream in different areas. When we're talking battle rap, that's its own, like, lane about it, which is still part of the, you know, the overall talk about hip-hop, but not right. necessarily Absolutely. the mainstream of commercialism of it. You know what I mean? But, like, yeah, like, the, the rise of battle rap is just its own thing. You know what I mean? Some people's careers... It's so funny, ironically, about the, about the rise of it, because some people made careers off of it, mm -hmm. and some people... Couldn't even they couldn't get out of battle mode. Couldn't make songs. It was just another avenue of expression, really. But yeah. it sharpened a lot of our legends because you hear about how like back in the day, Buster, DMX, and Jay Z you came up a circle. spitting against yeah. each other. I think you hear LL used to go. And all them niggas. I think if you're gonna call yourself like one of the greatest rappers, or not even call yourself, if you're gonna be considered a legend, like I think battle rap has to be somewhere in your artillery, not somewhere in your history. Not a new legend now. I, I think, a new legend. Yeah, I think because I, I think culture has shifted so far away from battle rap mm. that if you like, let's say a kid growing like you're a generation alpha saying. kid, you know what I mean, and you had all the other checks by your name, I wouldn't say you're not a legend because like the culture was way different. You had like battling was part of like rapping. Like well, that's how like, a lot of people learn how to rap. Well, for a new legend, like what's that thing? Like what does like y'all think would be like a big requirement? For, I don't like, know, to dog. Be a new legend? Is I, like I'm an like, old school, old like, school judge. I won't. I, I, won't I won't say. I won't say streams. But I'm gonna say it like this: for a new legend, your ability to make a song is way more important than it might have been if you was gonna talk about '90s legends. So you think the artistry of it all has become more important? The artistry of song making. Because you're yeah, trying to get hits, viral and making shit, making hits and shit, and that and that's what they take. And as like being able to get go viral, or being able to make a make like a catchy whatever is as important to these motherfuckers as it was probably to them niggas battling in the crowds. You battling for the net now, the millions instead of you know it's 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 all virtual. Like battling has become almost niche, but at one point it was you had to. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Like I can't respect you, Pat. Like you was born like I'm gonna say what like. 2000. After 2000, you know what I mean? If you was born after 2000, you almost Ooh. get a pass. But if you was one of them niggas from 2000 on back or whatever, it's like, nah, see, you knew what you came up in. You knew the, you knew the, you knew the scope. Ain't no way. Every, every legend got a battle story that we could probably think of. Mm -hmm. So, sure. but like, like I said, these new legends, I could hold it to them because it's not, it's not around like that. You got to find it and shit. Who would consider just, a new just, legend in the making? It'll be it'll be niggas that come after the niggas we're looking at right now. Or probably, or probably who who hot now? Like like who hot now? The baby, like anybody, not, not legend status. Well, he might end up being one, is what Joe's saying. But I'm saying, we we I could start. Give that more time. I we, can say Jigga's a legend. No, he's definitely a legend. But I'm gonna say this. Um, Jigga. we talk, You had yes, who's a new legend. But I'm saying anybody probably we gonna go from we millennials and millennials stop cut off at now it adjusted it so it's not like '94, and then it's Generation Z from '94 to like 2010. So. Is anybody from you could count in either Generation Z or Generation Alpha, which is twenty ten to now? Legend? No. Legend in the making. In the making, he's saying who gonna in the be making. Who uh, gonna be considered? Who gonna be exempt from having to battle rap? That and that's think, the that's I the think, ones basically born now. You know what I mean? We like, don't know Yanni, who they are yet. We don't even know who they are yet. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Well, I was I was gonna say one person at at first, but in that context. I think that's also 100% true. You can't even really say who's going to be a legend, like the new legends yet. Right. Not yet. Like, more time has to, we, has to pass. We're seeing, and because even the people that we've seen who are going to be legends, they still kind of come from that era of battling, like a J. Cole or a Kendrick or a Drake or a Big Sean. Them niggas new. You know what I mean? They got old school in influences. I mean, but I'm just saying all of them are, like, around my age. So, like, Drake, Drake and me a year apart. You know what I'm saying? Okay. J. Cole and me a year apart. Okay. Kendrick and like, like them saying. So I'm right. saying. Niggas that just hit 30 or made 31. It, you know what I'm saying, y'all? You know. But they're going to be legends in the next 10 to 20. Yeah. But yeah. they still come from the age of knowing battle. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's the generation under them who ain't know what. They're still developing. And I'm saying that generation on down. If you ain't got battling in your freaking repertoire, I'm not going to hold you the same as I would hold yeah. the J. Cole, J. Kendrick, Drake um, era on back. That makes sense. That's why I'm at with it. I remember that boy Drake said in one of the lyrics, I was on top when that shit meant a lot. And I understood that. Like, yeah, I remember when niggas used to be like on top as either like in the top hip hop artists or even the top rap artists of the game. 
on the hottest rapper of the game. And you know what you made me think about just now, son? In a weird way, it's because of how millennials, our high generation, covered it. Cause it, it and really Generation X too, but we really covered it the beef era. Yeah. Because that's what battling became in a way. It's like if the generation before us, they battled face to face. Yeah, it was drama. We covered it the diss song era as we was yeah. growing up. And I think that's going to be... beef. <laughs> that's that's going to be how they quote unquote battle in the future. Straight, uh, exclusively. It's going to be through diss songs. They ain't going to have it like that. It's going to be a niche era, of course. It's always going to... It's like jazz. It's always going to be battle raps face to face. But as far as who the best battler is, they're going to be judging each other off of who had the coolest diss songs, diss songs. Over, over like 10, 15 years of beef, beefing with somebody. Shit, I don't even versus say diss song. being I mean, in the I, fucking... You know what I mean? Ah! They're gonna, I think it's going to be mm. softer than that. I think it's going to be... <laughs> Damn! <laughs> I think niggas going to be judging off the hits. Nigga, oh, just like shit. they doing now. Your numbers ain't fucking with my numbers. Yeah. Numbers. Boy, you see what my motherfucking take care of did, nigga? Ooh, that's Get the fuck over. out of here, nigga. That's all. Battle's over. over, nigga. Just off numbers. Just numbers. That's, that's popular. That's that's garbage. No, it got to have some kind of finesse. And that's like really why I was asking the questions I'm, I'm asking, dude. Because it's like... I feel like when it becomes even more of a popularity contest... Because it always has, has been, but now it's way, way, way more... I just wonder is is that gonna be uh, something that drives the art to become more creative, or is it gonna like water it down? Both. Or is it both? Yeah. <laughs> it's always both. Yeah. Cause there's always gonna be some on creative both. water. It's always gonna be some. Cause there's always gonna be the motherfuckers watering the shit to make it to make their money. And there's always gonna be the motherfuckers that's the true art. You're never gonna stop a true artist. Mm-hmm. That's why I get true artists always gonna be around to balance the scale. Be like, no, I refuse. I pray. You there's know always, there's always yeah. somebody from that's gonna emerge from the underground. Let us know. There's still niggas under, under there cooking it up. Yeah, for real. I, I pray. Because yeah. every era it happens. Every era, just when mm-hmm. something seems like it's become like when when it was becoming too much gangster rap, Kanye came and actually we had a mm-hmm. wave of that. You you know what I'm saying? True. When shit seemed like it's becoming too whatever, we had to snap in the dance. I was like, okay, y'all. Listen, we've been like, really after um big and all that burden and all that shit. Niggas was like, we need to dance, you we know? need a party, so we need to snap. And, and then after like, then Kendrick and them came to balance all that snap and party shit out. Yeah, like, we need to get back to thinking. We doing too much drugs because we start rapping from selling it to now we rapping about doing it. Because I stand by that that class of Drake, Kendrick, J Cole, Big Sean, Kid Cudi, Wale. Uh, Big Crit, J Electronica, all of them were really grinding. Chance the Rapper, uh, uh, B.O.B., mm-hmm. all of them, Wiz Khalifa, all of them, Chance, like all of them was bubbling in around the same time. And that's the last class of motherfuckers. I was like, oh shit, there's a lot of spitters around here. Yeah. You know what I mean? In different ways, in different, in different flaws, ways. In different mm. storytelling in different ways. But they came out of watching the Snap and the Crump era take over so much. So it was like, Spitters came. Right. We uh, <laughs> tired of motherfuckers. Oh, snap your hands. Because I'm oh, saying, tired of dancing shit. Because <laughs> fuck what Drake had now. So far gone, nigga. That's a great album. Yeah. I mean, say what you want about Drake. Dude. Now. Like, like dude. Old Drake was spit. Dude, dude got some, got some fucking so uh, records, man. Nice. I didn't listen to the new album. Me I heard neither. mixed things about it. I'm not really I haven't heard it. I haven't, I haven't heard it yet. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to just sit up in this for a minute. We about to get into the show, guys. But y'all already know, this is Side B, so it get heavy. And, you know, y'all already know the news is going on in the world. So I was like, shit, let's, let's, just... let's, let's, let's live in <laughs> Let's live in some, some happier yeah. times. Yeah, pop, let's have yes. dessert for dinner. <laughs> Please? Because uh, this is about to be heavy. Welcome to the Fly With Bats podcast episode, I want to say 97, it Side 97 B. 97, Side B. Episode 97, Side, side B. B. It's that actor guy, Martin Bats Bradford. You can find me at Martin Bats Bradford on Facebook and on Google. Everywhere else at Mr. Bats. Spell it Mr. Outer. You're going to find another cat without any other duas. I'm here with my brothers. What up, what's good? You already know it's your boy, D-Mac. Uh, catch me on Instagram, FrenchBread.Kid. I'm probably going to change that soon. I don't know. I've been thinking about leaving that uh, part of my life behind. But uh, for now, FrenchBread.Kid. And... <laughs> 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 and uh, what else, man? Y'all making me forget my own uh, my shit. Sale. You know what? I'm leave that part of my life behind. Yeah, I have to leave behind Fresh Bread Kid. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it. But uh, yeah, over there and at your dig brand, find my clothing brand. It's uh, some of the hottest shit in these New Orleans streets. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't got Instagram, just go to yourdigbrand.com. Shop with me. And yeah, we here. Passe one, it's your boy Alpha Joe, fresh out of the gumbo, still deep in the room. And if you're out, out in the, the streets, streets and you're looking for me, me, you can find me on IG Alpha Joe, no E504, Facebook Joseph Alpha Man Ponds. And real talk, a lot of these stores are running out of goodies and good in uh, games. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sad. It's horrifying. It's a pandemic. 
Yep, man. The I see most of them down here. Martin bought half the store right here. Man, I was so surprised when I saw some silvers. They Optimo silvers. They Optimo still was. silvers. Smoking uh, Optimo. Optimo making money right now, though. <laughs> bro, bro. Optimo I, said, y'all thought we were going to make a comeback? I ain't say we are here for you. Bro, they all here for me, son. Because, <laughs> dude, I don't like that. We have, we've had this conversation so many times on the Flower Bass podcast, bro. I, we don't like the flavors. Right. Nope. You hear me? You if it's not flavor, a silver, sir. if it's not a, a goodish natural, yeah. Like you hear me? I don't know. I'm straight. Girl, so anytime I, I can get away from the flavors, I'm gonna get as many as I can. Yeah. A girl asked me, uh, "Why you don't like hookah?" I said, "Cause it tastes like a flavored golf." What's funny is I don't mind hookah, cause I'm I'm I t- I'm not trying to get high of hookah. I'm not taking like I'm taking hookah in it for play. Yeah. To, to me, hookah's for play. Unless you're telling me you put some weed in that bitch, I'm like, oh, we just gonna so take it some flavored man, smoke. Hookah. It's like flavored water or something. It's <laughs> so like I'm not thinking I'm gonna get high. I'm like, oh, vapor. Yeah, hookah is for play for weed. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not taking it seriously like that. But my nigga, if I'm trying to get high, I don't want all that. Yeah, like if I'm trying to be high, I'm that's not gonna get a hookah. Hookah is just for like. Like that's a super casual every once in a while thing. Like that's I might do. Weed tastes like that now. If you yeah. got some strawberries, some blueberry tasting weed. Yeah, now I'm like impressed. Right, yeah, come on, but, let's do it. But let's do it. Nah, man, dog. Because okay. it's trying too hard. Yeah. To be the flavor, which it's there for. I mean, shout outs to you if you you know like your hookah. You know what I'm saying? There's, yeah, there's like nothing wrong. What a fucking flavor, dog. Oh, no, but that's but down. that's the point. Like when you take when you taking in a hookah, you want to taste the flavor. If I'm paying yeah. for a hookah and I and that bitch is saying like lemon meringue pop, that smoke ain't taste like lemon meringue pop. I'm feel played. Yeah, I, feel played. I just feel played. I ain't getting high. But if I'm if yeah, I'm smoking yeah. something, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. Of oh, but every time, yeah, I feel like like fuck this dog. I need to be high. We watched that movie Half Bake. Them niggas all hit that fucking weed out that hookah. Yeah. You want to do that? You know what I'm saying? When you get your hookah, man, and then shit don't work like that. I'm about I mean, to say like the like weed. the funny thing is I rarely smoked weed out of hookah. I've had weed out of hookah only at particular places. One in particular we both yeah, know uh-huh. of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. you know what I mean? It's not it's not something that a lot of people have. It seems like you yeah. need a lot of weed to do. I never well, had to load you need a lot of things. I accidentally bought a hookah once and didn't know what to do with it, and I wound up like, I don't know what happened to it. Probably threw that bitch Probably away. Probably threw it away, son. Because I remember I bought it thinking it was a vaporizer. I ain't never no. seen nothing like that in, in here. I, thought it was, I, I bought it thinking it was a vaporizer from this nigga. And when I'm looking at the thing, I'm like, this is a fucking hookah because they had like the tubes on it and shit. Oh, okay. Now I was pissed off. But some vaporizer got tubes, you know? But yeah, nah, yeah. nah, 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 it was a hookah. I, I like hookah. the old school vape. Yeah, the, the old school wooden box. box. Yeah, the wooden box. Oh, that's that be right there. That's, that's the, the best one. Dog. That's the best one to meet, dog. Dog, I remember when that boy Sean first ducked that bitch, dog. Then he came to the house. I was at his house, and bro, I ain't gonna lie, it was the most purest high when I first right. hit dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my lungs couldn't stop tingling. I right. couldn't stop coughing, and the Facts. high I get was a euphoria. I have. I was like, dog, we Facts. taste like this. Facts. That's how we supposed to taste, man. Right. Facts. I really want to get me a box. I don't know why I don't have one now. Kind of expensive, honestly. Yeah. They only fifty bucks, huh? Man, what? They need I looked up. I looked up vaporizer like two hundred fifty dollars for uh, a vaporizer. It ain't that vaporizer you looking at? Yeah, man. We but gotta check the source but it, it was it wasn't like the old school ones. It yeah. was one of like one of them new fango dangles. Oh, okay, nah, wait, look at fire. Like, I want that old school joint. Like that bitch. No, that, it did like, it right, and it's so easy to clean. Fucking perk. Yeah, and so, oh, oh. I don't know about the old school ones. I'm done. Really, you never? No, no. I've had. I've smoked most of them. I'm just saying when I looked up vaporizers, I wasn't looking up. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I was looking up you know, what, what they look like, and them bitches could get pricey, my oh, nigga. No. I was like, what the fuck? The higher you go, That's the bad. shit. But like, some of that shit just be like, I remember that boy Shag wound up getting one of them um, volcanoes. Oh, he actually got one. Yeah, he got right? one. He How got much one. was that? That bitch like four something. Jeez. It's it's up there, dog. And he he been at it for years. But I remember like son when he got it, we smoked out of it a couple times. After that nigga barely ever. But I feel it. like that's wow. how most thing contraptions are. You probably do it for special occasions every now and then. But for the most part, you ain't gonna be using it, using it. And then that bitch, dog. Let me tell you, that bitch is intimidating to some people who ain't no smoker like that. Mm. Like picture you have a bunch of people over and you didn't fill up this big ass bag, and now you're like, yeah, you gotta hit it like this. And as you hit it, you gotta pull the bag, man. What the fuck, you know what I mean? Holy shit! Oh, then it's pure weed, you know what I'm right. saying? This is pure ventilation. I'm like, hey, so you, okay, got any, man. you got any gauze? Advanced only. You got any gauze? That's yeah. what my. That's right, what, that's no. what, you got any gauze? I'm just be like, man, look, uh, I get the gauze. <laughs> the gauze and then you gotta know, well, well, how about this bong that costs two thousand dollars? It's pure as fuck too, but it's a bong. And this is my reaction. Right, right. Yeah. most most Guard people slip. don't really like all the pipes <laughs> and bongs and, and stuff. Son, I mean, I do. Well, yeah, because you know we. 
you know, we're into that. But I mean, I think the majority of people got like they one or two ways of smoking, and usually it's not pipes because you got to clean them shits and they expensive. See, you know see me. Cost a dollar. See me. You know? I am the majority of people. That, yeah, that's me. Yeah, you feel me? I you know? I got bunks in over there that I barely gonna probably use. But I enjoyed the way it looked. It looked fire, man. Right. It's like but a nice look. It was a great present, you know what I mean? But I remember back in the day when I first was smoking, I had the setup. I had the bong, I had the pipe, I had the da da And then I started realizing, as you do when you get, as you grow, like, oh, I kind of more particular to this right yeah, here. Let me just roll this blunt. You know what I mean? It's not bad to have, because sometimes you might be out of blunts, or sometimes you might be entertaining someone who don't like blunts. Totally. So that's yeah. when you can have it. It's good. It's good to have. But a bong in a pipe is different from having a volcano in a gas mask. Yeah. <laughs> that's two different appliances. Right. <laughs> real appliances. Like, yeah, I know some niggas who got some real setups with the weed. I'm like, dog, you, you putting too much time to the weed. Like, I know you're trying to get high, but at some point, I feel like you're going to start injecting this shit to yourself to get high. Like, like you're going to find some kind of way to make a new tech. Like, nigga, just get high. Either smoke that shit in a joint or put that shit in some kind of glass. If you didn't know by now, we are the Potty Mouth Pothead Podcasters. <laughs> Welcome to the know. show, you dead. This is, like I said, 97 Side B. Uh, usually, we start this thing off with that etouffee of the day. Yeah. After that etouffee of the day, man, we get into that Dose of Nola America. Which is your friendly reminder of just where we stay and just what the fuck we be dealing with. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then we get to that no, huh? Bitch, I know you lie. Oh, we talk about crazy ass things going on outside of our 504 bubble, you uh-huh. did. Some shocking shit. There's always some crazy shit in this motherfucking city. Yeah. Atlanta, got yeah. New Gotham City. I mean, that's new, the, new, new, new Gotham. I mean, that's the country in the world. And after we get deal with, after we finish dealing with that, no, how we get to that hero highlight? Which is the time where we take the shine light on somebody who's doing good in the world of pure D. Fuckery. Fuckery. Oh, All types of fuckery. All types of fuckery. And then we holler at y'all in the next couple of couple of. Let's get on to the episode one hundred. Also, man, hit us up at flywithbats at gmail.com. As we always say, we want you to be part of the conversation. Come and talk to me. And if you're on Instagram, we got a new IG handle, the Fly With Bats Show. Follow yeah. that joint. Follow us there. You can follow us because that's where you get to see us on video. I'm going to put up all the videos yeah. specifically in depth. You can, you can find the videos on Gumbo Monster 504 as YouTube, but like very easy on your IG. Yeah, follow IG the Fly With Bats Show. It'll just pop up on you now. All the, all the clips are on IGTV, man. Thank God for IGTV. 10 minute situations, nigga. I like IGTV. Feel me? I'm going to think about bringing back uh, on location. I mean, bring it back where you want to put it. Fuck it. I don't care. We're going to talk about that off mic. Oh, my dude. I'm getting inspired. Hell yeah, man. I love inspiration. But, like, yeah, y'all, before we get into the show as proper, we start off with that scroll. Hear ye. Hear ye. The scrolls will be holler out and shout. Holler out. It's going to be <laughs> shout out. Podcast. Ha! <laughs> 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 Podcasts out there that we rock with, and most importantly, that rock with us. Yeah. Like Big Brother, shout out to the Your 30 Podcast. Man, with y'all. Happy six year anniversary, motherfucker. Six years awesome. in a bowl. Yeah, man. Clappity clap, clap, clap. That's the Arrogant Observer, Lawrence J. Weber Jr., and the homie favorite host, Marty Edwards 504. Your favorite stepdad. You did. Marty Edwards. Oh, he's the favorite stepdad, boy. Like yeah, which I think that's what we're gonna start calling like you. That. That's favorite Your favorite stepdad, Marty. Yeah, that's Edwards. perfect. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be laughing at I that. I love it. He's, they're both also co-hosts with me on shows on this feed, such as Acting While Black. That's me and L Dub, the Black Actopedia. Black Actopedia, and our favorite stepdad is with me on reviewing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna be reviewing Upload soon. We're gonna be reviewing. Hollywood soon. I was thinking about doing this like series of like reviewing like shit specifically from black directors. And like you when you say that, you think of like a John Singleton or Spike Lee. But I think the most hilarious director to start with would be Tyler Perry. I think that'd be good. We got high as shit and broke down and just was commenting on every Tyler Perry movie, D. <laughs> I think that should be hilarious. I say go for it. <laughs> Iowa, Iowa pissed me off. Cause it pissed me off when I first like that nigga Deuce broke my Tyler Perry eyes. I used to love Tyler Perry. Wow. You had no taste. Oh, I can see that. Whoa. That's, not, that's, that's me. Woo. That that's is harsh. That. Harsh, that's harsh, bro. That's harsh. And then he does have some good ones. There's right? some Tyler Perry movies I do like. I can't front on them. Continue. And and sometimes when you watch just him as Medea, he's funny. As Medea. Like, you know, he does some funny things. But, like, I never forget the day. 
Uh, I was in middle school and that boy Deuce, I put it on. I was like, man, come on, let's watch Upper Dears Fair Reunion, the play. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I just finished watching. I'm like, that shit funny as hell. But the <laughs> plays were fun. The plays were fun. I remember coming up. That used to be my little my, my little kick, bro. I used to bring, like... I hated those fucking plays. I'm about to say, they're, they're not fun, son. Oh, well, they were fun before. Some of them are, are pretty good. The plays before, when, I, when I'm like 15, 16, and 17, I don't really know, like, theater etiquette and all that shit. You feel me? It was yeah. a fun time. Yeah. Because that used yeah. to be my little slick date, bro. Like, while other niggas was like, oh, I'm going to take it move out. I take it to a play, baby. And, and we man, did. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And they singing and all that. Son, I thought it was cool, too. <laughs> 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 I thought it was cool too. Man, that nigga do said we wasn't up and watching that man. So you like this? I said, what you talking about? That man said, son, I can see these jokes coming a mile a minute. I said, what you mean? That boy said, look at her. She's got on like this polka dot cow looking outfit. Now Madea's gonna they're gonna tell her something about how she looks like a cow. And then Madea's gonna do something stupid and do something all crazy and pull out a weapon. And dog, when he called it point for point, pin for pin, I was like, this is not funny anymore. No. And I tossed that shit out the window. No, no, you coming. can't do that. Just because, sometimes, just because yeah. you could call it, that don't make it not funny. Because it some, was, dog, we know because it's Sometimes how people do a thing. Nah, no, son. It, it wasn't like I didn't see the magic. I just was like, this shit ain't funny. What the fuck? Like, I was like, I was like, I just, it wasn't funny no more. It just wasn't he pissed, funny. He pissed in the car, He molested your innocence. Yeah, like, he pissed in the car, Dog, I was just like, mm. He pissed in the car, please. He just yeah. wasn't, none of this shit was not funny anymore, dog. Now, Medea still remained funny throughout all those things. I was like, okay, Medea's still funny. But watching everybody else, I was like, this is bad acting. This is all, I was like, I look, because. But you also are hard sometimes on motherfuckers. Sometimes, yo, you be going in on people like, man, I don't know about this acting. Let me see more. <laughs> you, Joey, I'm like, damn, Joey, let him get the monologue out before damn, you turn your nose up, bitch. Man, listen, can't Joe don't play. at least get to the end. Joe don't play on certain people, that's all I'm saying. I come from the this and I'm saying, okay? I'm saying, this is younger Joe, because you got way more, like, cool. If I call their badge a younger Joe? Yeah, I was a dick. I was, a dick. I was like, man, I'm a trash ass nigga, man, I ain't got no love for this crap, I'm a poor ass nigga, man. I'm saying, bro. Boy, yeah, I was, and then I was, like, getting harder in the crap at the time, so I'm just, like, really was hard. I was like, nah, fuck this shit, son. This shit, they disrespect. I used to think that hard. They disrespecting the crap. The niggas used to break character because Madea would do some funny shit. Madea would do some funny shit. But they would start breaking, laughing and shit. And I was like, what y'all doing? This ain't. But that's they world. But that was their stitch. That was yeah, their thing. Yeah, that was their thing. thing. That was their thing, you feel me? Because that's what I can learn too. Because you know, when you really learn the craft and how you that the craft is, you don't break character for nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You feel me? We got taught that. Remember that Jeffrey Wright story? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. bro. Yeah. Um, how it went? Oh, you talking about with the, with the, with the, with the with, hat? With the hat. Okay, I remember the story. So actually, no, I don't remember the fucking story. But top dog, underdog. So he check was this Lincoln, out. And he had in his hat. I remember it. Well, you could tell it if you want to, but I remember it. All right. So, so check this out. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right. So there is a, there's a part of the scene on Top Dog Underdog where you're supposed to knock uh, the hat off of mm -hmm. uh, Booth, right? Booth knocks off Lincoln's Booth head. Booth knocks off Lincoln's mm -hmm. head, right? Yep. And so instead of the hat falling off the fucking off his head and onto the stage, stage, it falls into the audience. Uh -huh. And so Jeffrey Wright is like, the audience is wondering what's going to happen. So Jeffrey Wright sticks his arm out into like this imaginary world, like trying to at least find it, like basically He's in the dark. Willing it to mm. him. And so an audience member picks up the fucking hat, hands it to him into the stage. He grabs the hat, and the way he takes it back is of such a normal, like he doesn't yes, know where it like, came from. Whoa, shit. Like whoa, he sells it. That's fire. <laughs> that is so cool. He though. does not break the character. No, he added like he, he added a whole nother like because because uh, normally if you don't need that hat you just let it be gone. Yeah, you feel me. Easily. But you know, as Lincoln, that hat is part of the rest of the scene. It, it you can't just yeah, not have you it. You can't not have it. So you got to do something. Bro. So you got to reach into the fucking mirror dude. in your in your room, dude. Yeah, when I first heard that, like, cause I'm crazy. Man, me and you heard that story at the same time, high one. That's when I first heard it because we was doing Top Dog Underdog together when we first heard that story. Are you That's, sure? Because I heard that. I heard that story. I don't know where you may have heard it, but I, just heard, I heard it. Huh? Evan What's Cleaver that like? Where we had like worked on it. That's why I heard it. Evan, Evan, Evan Cleaver Evan, first Evan, worked on it. Evan, Evan Cleaver told that story. He, though, Evan so did tell us that story, but I knew that story from when because he was he became a big Jeffrey Wright fan when he found out Lincoln played Jeffrey Wright. You feel me? So I remember hearing that story before when Evan told it, but I couldn't put my finger on it because we did Top Dog, but man. It's yeah, just, that is amazing, though. Like, that's like... And to do that on the fucking spot... Now I'm wondering, did I just read that somewhere on my own if you don't remember it? I really don't remember the conversation. Because you know, I feel like you will remember that. Yeah, because, I mean, I like Jeffrey fucking right. You know or maybe I'm, I'm just mixing my memories, Joe. Maybe I'm just mixing my memories. 
I mean, even, great story. Either way, either way, either way, either way, either way, dog, great story. story. Like, Jeffrey you know, Wright still work magic. Jeffrey Wright still yeah. fucking amazing. I like moments like that, especially in the theater where they offer us moments of magic like that. It's like those are moments I feel like um, can test, test, test your will. Cause like it's, it's 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 one thing to like you know be on script. Like these are all things to have, but moments where shit is all already and you gotta flip something, you gotta really live in the world and react to it. I mean. You never see it coming. You just know it when it's in it. Like, do you have one that you remember? The one in Jungle Kings. It was yeah. So, you remember at the beginning of Jungle Kings, me and Rob got to play chess? Mm -hmm. So, we're playing chess, and as I'm picking up the pieces, as I'm uh, doing the mood transition, one of the pieces falls. And no one comes, like, the people that puts the clean up the stage, no one comes and picks up a piece off the stage. I don't know this. So, at the end of the scene, this is the end of the scene where um, I broke you down. And I'm, like, doing all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Cussing you down, and I'm breaking this lyric, and you go back to your cell. And as I'm walking, I kick the fucking chess piece. And it's quiet. The whole audience kicks. This is a solid moment. And I kick the chess piece. And everyone see me kick it too. It's in the middle of the season. I kick that bitch. So I picked that bitch up. And I looked at it. And I looked at it hard in the palm of the middle of the audience hands. And I looked back at you. And I went, palm in my hand. And I snatched it. And I walked out of the audience. Mm. And fucking India came to me and said, tell my mama that wasn't in the script. That you did that shit, you know what I'm saying? Because you, you was in a moment. I said, no, that wasn't in the script. Ugh. I didn't even know that. The thing is, I didn't know I was going to do that. But, but I, kicked, I, had, I kicked the chess piece. Mm -hmm. And everyone heard it, and I heard it. You and I, it didn't I can't, I can't yeah. just like leave it like, oh, no, mm -hmm. no. Nope. But, I can't, you know, but now I can do something, and I can flip it on it and still be in the scene and looking like that. The look of that moment we had mm -hmm. right before that, the setup, what I said after that was just... I, looked, I walked up that stage, and I was like, man. Yeah. That was a... Uh, that was when Thespos came in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I said, you can't call those moments. I got one that stick with me to this day, too. You got one that you could just think of, like, when you was, like, in a play and some shit happened, and you just had to... I know one that you told me, but I I'm going to see which, if you could think of one right quick. I mean, one of the biggest ones that's always going to stand stand out to me is the one where, you know, me and me and you are during, during Top Dog. <laughs> I was thinking about your one in Emmett when you had to look in the motherfucking... Uh... Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> but we can oh. tell about the Top Dog one, too, dog. But that Emmett one just made me laugh. Oh, so. shit. Nah, actually, no, no, no. Because that, that wasn't... Um... Okay. See the thing was, see that was that was every fucking body. Like that was kind of everybody's moment. Cause uh, <laughs> what happened was there's this there was this coffin on the stage where Emmy was supposed to <laughs> supposed to be in. Nobody can see in, in inside the coffin from the audience. <laughs> and um, some some fucking asshole dog. I forgot who did it. I forgot who did did this. But somebody put a fucking mannequin head. In the coffin with a guard. <laughs> <laughs> you heard know I me? Mean? This is supposed to be said like fucking yeah, Emmett Till. This is the Emmett Till play, dog. <laughs> this is the funeral scene, son. Oh, oh no. This is <laughs> so wrong. No. Nigga got a man get hit that bitch with a whole guard in his mouth, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, when they, and when they open the coffin, Tamika looks in it and it's like she's she has her back to the crowd because she's looking in the coffin but all you see is her face like <laughs> like she is trying to hold on so much and we're all on the side of the stage like like everybody's just about to just burst dog but that's like funeral music playing everybody oh my crying God. and shit dog like everybody then everybody on the fucking stage like sees this shit so everybody's trying to fucking hold it like you know, Bro. dog oh my god that shit was so fucking funny dog but everybody just held it you gotta hold it Tamika just screamed and like she tried to hide the laugh in the fucking scream you gotta hold it so you gotta funny, sell dog. it bruh hilarious dude but that top dog was so. yeah, but talk about with that fucking cell phone. Oh my god! Oh, let me hear this. I'm a, I got because I remember this story too. Yeah, always dog. Uh, this was um, who the, who the fuck left the fucking phone on the stage? Okay, so it was my phone. It was your phone. But Jamal left I'm it about on saying, the stage. I'm about, yeah, I knew Jamal was gonna be involved in I this shit. I told Jamal. I said Jamal. Up. My phone on the stage. Go get the phone. Make sure you get that phone before curtain, bro. You gotta get because they not let me go. You gotta get that phone. Right. And right. he said okay. And he never told us he never found it. So we have no clue that there's still a phone. Well, phone, right. Like, yep. it's just on a fucking stage. And somewhere. Somewhere in, like, the first scene. Like, this is scene fucking one or uh, two. And um, the damn phone phone so rings. rings. <laughs> you know, phone rings. And me and, and me and that nigga just look at each other. That nigga smile. <laughs> you gonna get that? You say, you gonna get that? <laughs> <laughs> Do it right <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my. 
guy. And I was like, I guess so. But then the phone stopped, stopped, stopped. ringing. Yep. So it was just like, oh well. Okay, back to <laughs> We just started talking again. Did it start ringing again? You know? They start ringing oh, yeah, again. They start, start ringing a second time. Yeah, I remember yeah. that because I was I've died inside. It started ringing a second time, and I'm like, damn, damn man. And then like then D started. Oh, he has shit. a guitar in his hand. He started looking around for that bit. Like what that thing? Like, what the fuck is it? And then it? it stops. I almost forgot that. part. Yeah, that was, was the part that got time. me. That they they called twice, and I was so drove by that. But well, Ray was pissed. Off. Ray Ray went nuts. G. I can imagine because it was during the show. It's a show. Yeah. It was during a show. Was it wasn't no rehearsal, my nigga. It was under the chair. It wanted me under the chair, motherfucker. But um, a chair. my nigga, he did. But my situation, <laughs> my 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 happened. What's the name of this play? Measure for measure. Huh. In the play, I'm playing uh the, the king, and in the play, the king um he he something happens, and he pretends like he's going on this long trek when really he hides and pretends to be like this bum or whatever, and like he wants to play attention to like what's really going on in his kingdom and shit. He's in disguise. He stands disguised the whole time. The whole time he's stand disguised. The way the director, uh, rest in peace, uh, Fred Mead, the way the director um, set it up was he had us all dressed in these different things, these extreme, you know Shakespeare, so you can do whatever you want, mm-hmm. these extreme um, characters. So DC was in there, um, his character, he was like a James Dean type, he had the old school varsity, like sweats, jack and his shit, um, like the main character chick was like a Joan of Arc type, shout out to her, she killed it. Um, when, I was the, when, I, when I was a king, I was dressed like a director. But when I was um, like in, in the streets, he had me dressed like Jesus. So I had like this wig on and shit. And I had this like the whole Jesus thing. And like he had, he had a devil and he played the devil as a matter of fact. But they had all these like images. So at one point, <laughs> my ass I'm on stage is me, this other actor, and we're talking or whatever. And my wig comes off. <laughs> And that can't happen. No one can see me with my wig off. The play is broken. You feel me? Mm. And we're doing Shakespeare words. So it's not like I can say, say, bro, hold up. You know what I'm saying? So like when it my comes wig off, has fallen. I went, hark! And I'm so glad she was such an amazing actor. She went, look that way. And I was able to adjust the, the wig all that. You feel me? And I'm like, I'm like, dog. I'm they were joke the fuck out of it. They thought it was part of it. No, yeah, so it was yeah. like it was half. Some people thought part of it, and some people were like, you motherfucker. And I was yeah. like, bro. Hey, you had to do something. That was saying a heart. I love it. Because you walked yeah, up that, that, that and awesome. dude, I, and I was, you know, and I made it funny and shit by it, but dude, I was like, and that's, you know, y'all yeah, all know a it. Second. There's a second it's where a you're second. frightened. You're like, you're like, like, it's like, it's like, oh, it's like, shit. What, what should I do, dog? What should I do? I need to make more. I need to make more. I need to make more. You don't got much time. You don't, right. so you don't. Red wire or blue wire, dog? Cut the fucking wire. Cut the wire. Dog. <laughs> Either way, go, this bitch is going to blow if you don't. So you better cut God. something, nigga. Bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm never, I'm never in life gonna forget that shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? And like, because a, a le- and that's the thing you have to work with. A lesser actor may have just froze and not gone with it. Right. Like so I was gonna say, I came and say it's just me. It was, it was good that I thought of it, but I was so glad she. <laughs> If she didn't do she that, didn't she didn't read. Mm-hmm. But she, but she's smart too. I think we all. I think we both knew in that millisecond his wig came off. <laughs> right, right, right. Heart. Hmm? Right. I'm gonna go over here. Fuck it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Team sport. Team yeah, effort. That's a, that's Ensemble. Team effort. Ensemble. But yeah, though we supposed to still be in the star. I mean, the fucking uh, the damn scroll. The scroll. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was like, what I don't even know how we went off on that tangent. But um. <laughs> Hell. But uh, also, we always have a tangent in the scroll. But also, uh, the we'll figure this out podcast. The Mrs. and the Mike. Oh, my bad, Bree. I got hit Bree back. She wanted to do a Zoom. A virtual crossover. She wanted to do a Zoom crossover with us. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes, Bree. My bad. I got to send you a message on IG. Um, uh, on the Lake. On the Lake, po- the on the lake Podcast. On the, on the Lake. They just dropped the episode recently. Shouts out to the girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chelsea Chagg just said something for bruh. You saw that? Yeah. I, I was mad about that. that. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, she, had, she had me joke because, you know, like we was kind of shitting on. You know, you particularly. Was, was that you? Or, which I feel one like all three of us had our kicks right. with it. No, but no. Some I particularly hated the title. It was you. You hated, hated the title, the title bruh. bruh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do hate the fucking title. Yeah. So she bruh. tagged us. I, I, I still. Oh, yeah. She tagged I totally forgot poster. that conversation. That's why she oh, tagged us. Because I said, did you watch it? She's like, no. I just remember y'all was clowning the title. Oh. <laughs> I, was like, I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that title. I still Bruh. hate it. <laughs> Sugar Sassy. Sugar Sassy Sarcasm Podcast. 5420 Podcast. The Nerd, Nerd Shit, shit. 
Podcast, the Peanut Gallery Podcast, the Danny Rant Podcast, the Living hey. Millennial. And the 2000s kind of world. Some places are reopening it, and y'all need to chill that fucking shit out. That's kind of scary. Yeah, dude. That's kind of scary. Shouts out also to the Self Aware Millennial Podcast. And that's all the ones on the current scroll that we have. Yes. Yeah, man. So, um, I ain't got no more dwells. Let's get into that Ed to Fed of the Day. Brother got his first gun, he ready to murder He out of control, like this swole on bourbon I don't even drink, if I see you, I ain't see you Nah, I don't even blink, nah, I don't even think That I'm here, but if I see you and I like you I'ma smile, is this really who I am? Huh? Then versus now, life is too wild This shit is out of hand I'm just trying to live, but y'all don't give a damn I'm just trying to be cool, I don't wanna lose my I work, lose my mind, lose my spine, lose my shirt. But if you know me, then you know I go berserk. Then you know I go berserk. Then you know I go berserk. Okay, so. Where there's like a list of things that we apparently can't do while being black, and now we can add jogging to it, right? Right. Shit. Damn. I mean, once you realize you can't be in your own house, jogging was just I mean, you out in the street. Oh, nigga. It gets to a point. <laughs> it gets to a point where. The numbness of it all, and you know it's not right to feel numb about it, but it's like you can't help but be like, because like it pisses you off. Well, for me, I'm gonna speak for myself. It pisses me off, but it's like a place that I've been to so many times before that it's not that 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 I can't even explain it. You no, know what no, I mean? That's the that's the same place I am with it, and I was kind of feeling funny at first because it's like as pissed off as I am about this shit. Like, just the exact way you just said it, dog. Like, I've been here so many fucking times already now. America like, makes things that we should not think of as that's just the way it is. Right. As just that's the way it is. And, like, my inner self is, like, trying to fight, like, accepting that. Yeah. But, like, a piece of me, I feel, has already accepted a piece of that, you know? Well, it's it's mm-hmm. not that we're accepting it, but at least for me, I'm going to speak for myself. It's like, in a... It, Okay, in a weird way, I'm having to accept that I can't I can't directly do anything about the fucking shit outside of just being aware, having the conversation, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know if that makes me kind of a bad person, cause it's like it's like it's like what do we fucking do, son? Like, what are we supposed to do? Like, this shit keeps happening, like, over and over and over again. And we keep having the same conversation over and over and over again. And the funny part is, you know, some white people be like, <clears throat> well, white people get killed by cops, too. But I'm like, but when a lot, most times you see white person killed by the cops, when you read the setup, you be like, okay, that kind of made sense that, that that he got shot or she got shot with him. Majority of the time when you see unarmed black people being murdered, it's too many fuck ups. Not even just by cops, yeah. but just like by random people that are white. You know what I'm saying? Just and with no repercussion to them. And it and it goes back to like um just uh, the, almost all, none. Why 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 the stereotype of black men or the stereotype of you know what I mean black people to these different communities and such is so dangerous to keep purporting because they believe the stereotypes to the point of. Mm-hmm. They will defend themselves to the death mm-hmm. and or set you up because they feel like you you your life isn't necessary, mandatory, mm-hmm. real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Valuable. Mm-hmm. And that's just some shit, bro. Cause this this Ahmad Alberry situation is like, my nigga, he taking a jog. Y'all cut him off. Y'all come fucking with this man. Is that the real whole case of the story? That this they were he was taking a jog and he saw him jogging. And decided to like beat him off to the, the thing and stop him from where he was going and shoot him. Apparently, he fit the description of somebody that was breaking into houses or something. I think that's what I heard. And they took it upon themselves. An ex officer, right? He's no longer an officer. And so crazy shit happened months ago. It's happening in February. Yeah. I have a few stories on it. Let's see what this one's saying. Two Glen County commissioners say District Attorney, Attorney Jackie Johnson's Attorney. office refused to allow the Glen County Police Rep- Department to make arrest immediately after the February 23rd shooting of Amada Abery. 
The GBI announced the arrest of Travis McMichael, 34, and his, and his father, Greg McMichael, 64, because that's the, that's the news that just came out, I think, today, was both of them have been arrested and the camera guy, I'm going to find his name in a second, um, more than two months after the fatal shooting. The police at the scene went to her saying they were ready to arrest both of them. These were the police at the scene who had done the investigation, said the commissioner. She shut them down to protect her friend, McMichael. Mm. Greg McMichael, now retired, once worked as an investigator in Johnson's office. Mm. Commissioner Peter, Mur Peter Murphy, who also said he spoke directly to Glen County Police about the incident, said officers at the scene concluded they had probable cause to make arrests and contacted Johnson's office to inform the prosecutor of their decision. They were told not to make the arrest. Johnson recused herself from the case within days of the shooting. Her office has now responded to a request to comment on the commissioner's, the commissioner's okay. account of what happened or on the case in general. Um, but I want to get to the, the details of the case because usually in these stories they retell them. Um, two months. Oh, go, 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 right, right, right. That's it. Mc, uh, McMichael's told police right, they so were trying to. Further up, further up. Um, the arrest came roughly 36 hours after G5 opened a state investigation. Probable cause was cleared out. Agents pretty quickly. I'm very comfortable. No, you're talking about the arrest. Uh, I think the Mc, McMichael's told police they were trying to make a citizen's arrest because they suspected Arbery of committing burglaries in the neighborhood. Friends and family have said Arbery, who was unarmed, was only on his daily job. The two-month delay fueled tensions in the community that culminated Friday with a large demonstration at the Glen County Courthouse in Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Durden said it was unfortunate that the investigation was stalled for so long. We take what we are given and go back and look at what has been done and move forward. The video was already out. We saw it. We reviewed the rest of the file and we made an arrest. Calls continued Friday, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of those times where actually social media actually helped the situation because it going viral. And so, like, that's the fucked up part, man. I saw a meme that said they didn't care that... They didn't care about the video. They just cared that we saw it. Mm -hmm. Nothing would have happened if it didn't go viral. I think that's a, a lot. And that's many of these cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's like, when, and that's the thing that really like be piercing I mean, a nigga shit. when they come out. I'd be like, you are one that's famous. But there's like literally dozens of you that dozens. don't become viral or famous or on our radar. What you saying, my nigga? No, I was just saying like when it's coming to video, like uh, I remember that Rodney King case <clears throat> ring back into it. They showed the video and everyone saw it. And when they saw that the case didn't make no change, they burnt the fucking city down. Because the trippy part is, Rodney King is what early nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that at the no, black people nineties. Yeah, black people for decades were saying was having bad experiences with the cops and kept saying it, kept saying it. We all knew in our community forever. The, 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 for years and years. You know what I mean? mean? And white people didn't, and around. white the white community didn't really start believing it until they saw the Rodney King shit, and that's like wild to me. And to this day, they still kind of have a lot of them still have a certain blindness to it you know what i mean so like choose that blindness too man dude if you even look on your facebook a lot of your white friends don't be sharing the same shit like for, like like they do like some gay rights thing happened or something happened to caitlin or whatever the fuck whatever the other the, whatever progressive thing that they think they should care about a lot of times when it comes to these black boys and girls shot in the street a lot of them saying people don't say nothing even worse bro I, I stumbled across this um justice for the mcmichaels facebook page that had like forty thousand people in there dog 40,000? 40, 40,000 people thinking these men should be... They even though the details is coming more and more out that they set this man up and killed this man for no reason. There are people that no matter what, they just gonna ride. That should, that should show you. This right other there, picture bro. going viral with this dude holding the gun up with the American flag saying, man, them niggas don't want no race war. Like, dog, they got people like them saying, like, we, we, a lot of times we think about, like, you know what I mean, the sophisticated white person. But no, dog, they got these other mofos out here that just... All gone off they fucking rocker. And when you can't even look at a person as a human being, I'm like, if they was black, Asian, Hispanic, or whatever, nobody deserved to just get hunted down like that. You feel me? Nigga said, somebody said, I can't even jog without the glizzy on me. Like, Bro. Because it's like, damn, dog, you know, you watch that video, which everybody has seen this video, right? No. I didn't watch the video because I'm I'm just like I, I think I got it right here too. But you gotta watch it now. I seen the video. Yeah, I'm not really into watching the video, bro. Thank you. But um, it just tripped me out. Is this another thing? Uh, what's this story? But keep going. What you saying, my dude? <clears throat> no, I just like saying like it just. This man was 25. <laughs> the way the way that it was set up, it was just all bad, man. And I, and especially with the camera guy. Because you, when you watch the camera guy, it's like, why is there a camera guy here? And why is he not calling the police? Or why is he not saying anything? Or who was who in there? Why are they not doing anything but just parking the car and watching? And then you kind of wonder, how did you know, this video come about? Somebody must have leaked this. Mm -hmm. Most likely, it was probably like it got leaked because they was fucked. Like, some, 
like that, that group that got 4,000 people, like, I got, it's funny when you have white friends, you know what I mean? One of my white friends sent me that shit. It was like, man, peep this shit. Because that's the mm. thing. In my sphere, I'm only going to see so much shit. So she sent me a few, like, things that people have sent her just because she white. Not even knowing, bitch, I ain't with this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But just, you're in that space, so you're going right. to be closer to yeah, those kind of people. You're going to see all that shit. Yeah, son, and I'm like, whoa. They got you, all kind of groups. So far, you know, this could have been thrown in a group, like, repping it. Like, look what we did to the niggers. And then somebody who's not supposed to be in that space, like, oh, shit, this fucked up. Let me show this to people, mm-hmm. and boom. Because they, the, the, this person was arrested. They was in on it. So I don't think they leaked themselves. Right, right, right. Not a murder. I was a whole murder. And you and you're just sitting there recording it, like you're with it. So I feel like it was a trophy that just got out. That's yeah. what I, I just spent my own That's speculation. That's what I think. I think yeah. it just got it just got out. So you like, you, like I think you said somebody that wasn't supposed to be there saw something and took it back with him. Bruh. Blew that shit up. Yeah. Because like man, like oh like I refuse to watch it, bro. Because it's just like well, it's basically I'm like that's a lynching. That's a fucking like, lynching. We didn't watch a few of these already like many times before, and it doesn't get no easier, but. I tell you this, when y'all talking about like kind of feeling numb to it and kind of feeling like that's the way it is, I don't think I can ever feel like that. But I do feel it. I feel it trying to creep up, but I don't, I keep fighting it all the time because the thing is, I I just realize that it's a never ending fight, and I just I got it, but I still got to fight. But it's a never ending fight. No, but that's the point we're talking about. Right. That that creeping up you're talking about. It's in your body. At one point in my life, it wasn't even there. I didn't. I was blind to it. I'm like, we could just fight. But now it's like the fact of numbness. When you see it so many times, it's like I'm still like, let's fight. But right. it gets to a point of what? What do you do? You know what I mean? Like what D said. Like, cause I'm, I'm a big purveyor of keep the conversation going, get loud. But like, end of the day, you gotta. We we have to vote people in the office that's gonna change shit because. Right. Nothing else works. I like this spoiler alert. The hero highlight. I was gonna shout out the people that's like running for the justice, but I'm like, that's not doing shit for real right now these days. Like, like to, I, I'm not. Hey, if you want march, you want protest, you want run, do no, your thing. I feel what you're because saying, that is your. Because I feel like that is your form of it. Because yeah. it's gonna take all of it. There, there's that right. There's there's many times. There's many forms of protest. Yeah. Like yeah. this podcast is a form of protest. You could do a play as a form of protest. You can make a movie as a form of protest. You can you can march. There's so many ways. As long as you're getting the information out to people and you spend you fight and you and you speak in that real and you getting people information, even if you're just inspiring a motherfucker, yeah. that's still part of the fight. So I'm yeah. not saying don't do your part, but at the same time it's hard when you see the same circle keep happening it's like murdered motherfucker bunch of marching no laws of change person not really indicted move on to the next motherfucker we thought we had two in the same week we had sean reed and omar Ahmad arbery in the same week come out in the news yeah that case on uh, facebook live and these cops laugh so we got a case of former cop Hunting down a motherfucker in the street that's just jogging and his kid just being on some fuck shit because you scared of black people. That's what it really come down to. You scared of black people. You've been seeing this because they said that part of town is like segregated. So that he he been really jogging through the white area. They've been tired of seeing this nigga drive drive through the area, making them nervous. Again, the stereotypes of the black man working against us, because they didn't they didn't work themselves into a frenzy of justification mm-hmm. as to thinking why this is cool to do. They're not just being evil in their brains. They're thinking in their minds, well, at some point this we let the this, right thing to do. Bro, we let this nigga just keep coming through, man. He's he's fits the description. You know what niggas do? They steal. Oh, he was driving, man. He he looked in our house one day, didn't he? Like, you know what I mean? They didn't build mm-hmm. up some bullshit. They built their, up their own fear. Do in their fucking mm-hmm. head, and then another one of us dead didn't even do anything to you, just off you being afraid of ghosts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then you get into actual police. You killed this man while he on Facebook Live. I don't give a fuck what's going on, and then you laugh about it. Oh, dog. You laugh about he it. He booking it and running, and you shoot this man down. Number one. I don't know where they, they. I'm 100% sure they tell you that you can't shoot a man in the back when he's on a run. I'm like in 2020, ain't y'all ever getting any piece of common sense that this can have a blowback? Man, did you how many? Did you hear how many shots, dog? Bruh. It was like I don't know. You say you say you didn't watch the video. Uh, but, I ain't but, watching dog, no videos. I'm re- I'll so read the hard. article. I I'll read the article, bro. I ain't watching no it videos so of black people getting shit. I'm not watching shots, none of that shit. Right. It was so many. Shots. I'm not watching that shit, son. That is that is it that was is all unnecessary amount of shots. Unnecessary amount. He was live streaming himself while he was on Facebook. The shot kill happens to be unknown black, but I'm trying to say, what was the details in this? Video clips went viral. Of course it went viral. Bitch, you on Facebook. Uh, gonna be closed casket. Okay, this is not the story. On May, on May 6th, Indianapolis Police Department. Which, uh, 
They Indiana's were traveling State. northbound on Interstate 65 at West 30th Street. When 30th Street, when he observed a vehicle described as a gray Toyota Corolla with four doors driving recklessly. The vehicle had almost struck other vehicles while it exited the interstate. Deputy Chief Adams was in an unmarked police vehicle, and Chief Randall Taylor was in a separate vehicle directly behind Chief Adams. The uh, Chief Adams asked for other officer assistance and he began to pursuit on the vehicle. Chief Taylor continued to assist Major Adams. These are big time names running after chiefs and death. Like what? The vehicle yeah. continued driving at a high rate of speed and disobeyed all traffic signals. As more cars arrived in pursuit, Chief Taylor and Major Adams removed themselves from the pursuit as his standard, as his standard procedure. At 610, the pursuit was terminated by Sergeant monitoring the, monitoring, monitoring the pursuit. Officers immediately backed away from the vehicle and disengaged their emergency equipment. Um, blah blah blah. They came to the way what happens. A, sh a short foot pursuit occurred eastbound from the location. Initial information indicates the officer deployed his taser, at which point there was an exchange of gunfire between mm. the driver and the officer. Mm. The driver was struck by the gunfire. Indianapolis police responded to the scene and pronounced the driver deceased at the scene. And this is their, this is their, uh, this is their, what you call it? Yeah, what you call it? Their, uh, their statement. So, this their statement? Yeah, this is their statement. So, that's not what the fucking Facebook Live said. So they said this man was shooting at the at the fucking cops? That's Listen, not what was on the video, though, right? Yeah, on the video, let me tell you, dog. It, it had to happen before the video because there ain't no shooting on the video. They got that nigga was like, he and that bitch, he like, look, man, I'm about to fuck it. Like, basically, and he was talking to somebody, he said, telling somebody, on whoever he was on that bitch to talk to, he was telling them, look, man, come get me, man. Come get me, man. I need you to come get me. And then he's like, man, fuck it, I'm about to book it. And you see that nigga, like, run? And see that nigga run, dog? You know, you see like, the camera moving like a nigga running, and you hear like about thirty shots, and then that nigga drop, and then you hear, like you hear like the, them niggas talking clear as day about like how it's gonna be. A, they, they got a closed casket, and they laughing about it and shit. Like everything that people saying about that, all that shit true is just all on the video. Like you know no, what I'm I I don't trust police statements because I've read so ridiculous. I though. read lies on myself firsthand from police statements at times. Mm -hmm. So it's like whenever they says a police statement, I'm like okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I need more can, information. They, they can write anything. I'm sorry. You gotta give me more information. Because the thing is, they said they, they, they said that he they, they 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 struck fire. The driver struck fire between them and another person while they was driving, and he got shot basically. And like died like when they rushed him to the like what well, then like he died on the scene or something. And, but that's he didn't he didn't he didn't drive dog. Like he put that bitch in parking. Like hopped out that bitch and fucked it. Either way it go, bro. He was running. Both those situations Shit going viral like, in the same week. And you know the conspiracy theorists, they could be like, oh, they're trying to just make black people be so wrapped up in this because something else might be happening. Something else could be fucking happening, dog. But We got to handle this issue too, dog. This issue is a joke before all other shit even happened. Again, because the fact that you can even, like, let's say that there was some, like, big time, like, people running the show that really, like, pulled the puppets and the strings. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, let's give the black people this to worry about so we can do this over here. Let's see what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. I'm tired of that even being an option that you could even have. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it happens so often and so much that even if that were true, you can pull that and it's just there for you. Because so many of y'all be fucking up like that, even still. And I'm like, yo, that's why I still go back to y'all. You, you, you're you using this, like you're using the fears of these motherfuckers against us. And it's only really <laughs> affecting us. Right. We're the ones dying. Our fucking mamas and daddies and uncles and aunts and grandparents and grand and you know what I mean all scared for us to go jogging and shit. I had a partner, he put up a statement, he said, dude, I jog every freaking morning. And my girl always be like, be careful when I give her jokes. Then this motherfucker gets shot just jogging. Just jogging. I'm like, bro, now every time I jog, I like yeah, you got, it's a fear in your mind, you gotta change the complexion. I mean, like, dude, if you look at so much like like, you know, there, there's the there's the memes that have gone viral of like, yeah, we can't do this and we can't do that, or we can't do that. Or you can be, or there's another one that went viral of tell it to this person and that person and that person. And it's the fact that you have all these people and seemingly and seemingly like normal situations. Both them Gene John was just chilling in his motherfucking crib. You know what I'm saying? Oh, girl that got shot with her fucking nephew who was just chilling, just doing normal human shit. Man, Philando Castile was in what? his car with his child. No, a lot. There's a lot of situations, too many situations of us doing the most mundane of shit that anybody should be able to live being like live through, and we don't. And this happens every fucking year. There's a viral one, and again, when you niggas like anybody thinking deeper, deeper, so it hurt. It affects me deeper because I'm thinking, damn, you're reminding me that this happens. Often, more often than we'll ever see be viral. Right. You can't catch them all. That's not the way viral work. You know what I mean? That's why this comes out three months after the shit even went down. 
Right. We didn't even know about this when it went down. And look at how blatantly fucked up the Ahmaud Arbery shit is. Like, what the fuck? If anything, the Ahmaud Arbery shit may have given more publicity more publicity to the Sean Reed situation. Because maybe that might have gotten going on the motherfucking radar. Who knows? You know them small man, towns, man. Them small towns really have a lot of uh, unsolved crimes and un- unkept shit that they, they, they never talk about. Bad enough in the big cities, the cities that have that. But at least in the big cities, somehow, like, there's enough people to where it will go viral on this note. This shit happened because a slip-up happened. This would have never got out upon like this because this wasn't like your boy who went Facebook Live. This, with the uh, Ahmad situation, was a pure slip-up of someone seeing something he wasn't supposed to see and was able to snatch this information and go on. Because, like you said, we haven't seen it in months. And your girl, from what the case said, was basically like, told him not to get arrested. No so, offense, you but fuck them details. You know what I'm saying, G? No, I ain't about the details. What I'm saying is that, like... In small towns, this shit happen all the time. Yeah, you know I, I get that. I get what you're saying, and that's fucking crazy because they could get away with it. Way yeah, that's it's so easy. It's so yeah. easy. Like, like, you like you can like, multiply like, him by however many hundreds, dude. They live in bubbles, dog. Mm-hmm. Like small town America, that's most of the country, son. Like we live in major cities, right? Though. So like, we have a whole got, city slant purview that's yeah. different. All these little towns, shit, got their own bubbles, their own mayors and shit, son. Like they cover up whatever the fuck they want to cover up. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just tired of being the target of that. And then a motherfucker have to tell me that that's normal. And I'm like, no, yeah. bro, that shouldn't be it normal. It shouldn't be normal. And I'm tired of all these white people being quiet about it and getting mad when we say like it's like it's like when we say it's like when when a mother, when it's not a, a viral sensation and black people speak on this, you tell us we bullshitting. And then when some shit go down, you disappear. Man, that's why. I, and it's I, like, what the fuck, yo? It's like either, either, either look at this shit like we looking at this shit, or shut the fuck up when we trying to tell y'all, man, we live in a different damn America. Uh, as only, still, it, it's still in twenty twenty, still with all the progressions, because we made progress. I won't be one of these niggas saying, oh, we still no, we're not in the same position as the nineteen fifties and the nineteen sixties. No, but not. dog, that's almost insulting that we're smarter now as a generation and still stuck with a lot of the same fuckery from the nineteen fifties and the nineteen sixties. That makes no fucking sense to me. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, mental conditioning is is a is a real thing. Bro, so powers are a real thing. Money is a real thing. I get I get the root of it, though. It's just mm-hmm. okay. I ain't gonna say it don't make no sense to me. It's so fucking heartbreaking and unfortunate. Absolutely, it shouldn't still be, it but it have will. To be a thing. Yeah, and it it wills its way. And like you said, small time America, there's more of them than anything. Right. Yeah. So by like even anything. even when us big cities progress, they don't a lot of times. A lot of the time, dog. And they vote too. Yeah, that's the that's the majority of the voters, son. Huh? All these in between places, dog, that we be passing through. Like you said, he was bump, jogging in some white neighborhood that he should probably, you know, they didn't feel like he should have been there. They didn't feel like right. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And they was in a small area to where they knew the, the like. Well, that's funny thing about white people, dog. Especially in towns like this, I recognize they know the officials, they know the town elects, they go to dinner with these folks, they know them on a very strong basis. Like you said, that was a friend, you dig? Then people got high places. Even watching the wire, dog, you can see that like there's connections to people. And those small towns was majority white, man, them motherfuckers that had a whole meeting about that and everything. They dog. told that man mama that he was really breaking in the spots, and then you look at the video, he was nowhere by a house. No fucked up that is. And the broad day like he was breaking in the spots. Bruh. I know my son, this guy, come on, dog. Like, you gonna tell his mama that he was breaking in? Like, they, they told his mama he broke in the spot, and then people killed him on self defense. They don't care, brother. And then his videos proved that he was in the street, <laughs> nowhere near a house. Like, because, dog, you watch, and like it, you say you don't watch the video, but like, like for the people who, um, when you watch it, dog, you see him jogging, and you see his other car following with a camera, and you're like, why the fuck is this car following him? And then, then you see him, and it stops, and it's like, that's what makes you feel like it's the setup. That's why you people ask like, who is this third man, the camera person? Because it's like he, you see him jogging, he's just doing his own thing, dog. And then you see him fighting now, and it's like, what the fuck is he fighting for? And you see him trying to fight the gun against one dude while the fucking other person's in the. I think he's fighting the son while the father's in the car shooting at him from the truck. That was a man thing that the lawyer on Breakfast Club was saying. He was like, bro, he went down with a fight. He like, did. He, he did. Dog. Let him just he, do it, to dog. Him. Real talk. I don't know how many times, or how many times he got shot, and how many he took before he went down. But he was beating the shit out that white man with the, with the gun. He was like the one he had. Yeah. He was swinging a fuck lock in his ass. I was like, I was like, dog, hope he dropped him. But 
We got any Karens that this is happening to? Because apparently, you know, Karen is the same as being a nigga in America. I don't know who started that shit. Apparently, apparently being a Karen, you know, so, uh, cause Karens out here so fucking oppressed. Who? We got any Karens being shot in the street for no goddamn reason? Yeah, who, I'm when, trying. I'm trying to find them them nakers. When and who right. started that? Who who and when started that? Like when did, when did that really become a thing? Because I looked up one day. Bunch of boy white Karen. middle aged white women. So what they, they just became like what well, they were tweeting about it one day and it was like a bunch of them got together and was like hey let's tweet about how we don't want to be called Karen anymore man a few who was out there calling them Karen that hard like that they kids who can't be us right <laughs> right because I was like I was like we didn't invent Karen that was no like, no 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 we like, we started this shit I mean, yeah, we called him Becky like, we called him Sally yeah we, we got a bunch of names for them yeah but it like, went it's in the catalog yeah man so no they got tired of, I mean I don't give a fuck honestly shut like if like when you when you face this shit like these situations. Every other like every year, my nigga, like that's when I be looking at white people like for real, and like and so many, and so many hypo- hypocrisies in the news, bro. Like like the motherfuckers that's like out there protesting so they can open up the states and shit. All of a sudden, oh protesting. man, it's cool and shit. They protesting with guns. They talking shit about Kaepernick. They, they talking they shit face. about Flint, Michigan. They talking shit about all the times that black people are really protesting about real shit. Real issues, dog. And y'all motherfuckers out there like legit. And they in the police face threatening them. Fucking spitting on them, talking to them crazy, dog. All yeah, that blue lives, and all that all lives matter shit is utter bullshit. It is, dog. And, it, it and is. we always knew. It's not like it was like yeah, proper. That's the sad part about we it. Always we knew. always knew. But my point is, bro, where where are the legs that you can even stand on to defend a piece of it? Like the the it, it's even stupider now when we see y'all beating up the police over this shit. Y'all pulling guns on the police and not nothing happening. And right. they got motherfuckers whose lives ain't mattering to y'all that's really dying out here. That's why the older I get, the more I understand why older black folks don't give a damn about white folks. Bro. Because they, they have a, like, a sense of like, fuck them white folks. You know what I'm saying? They didn't been through so many years of that shit. And they, they don't give a fuck how progressive they feel they may come. So like for the majority of white folks, at least in this country that I come across, but I feel like this is across the world, just um, fuck them. You know? But you know what's even crazy, dog? See, our parents and grandparents are way more justified than that. Yeah. I don't know if it's worse or better the fact of we're growing up with more supposedly more progressive minded white folks and still they can't get right. Yeah, that's I mean that's still shit that they just can't shake, son. Like yeah. it's just so deep. That shit deep is that deep. Shit dog. Still raw does run like, deep, dog. Son. That hatred is deep, son. It's generational. It's take a while, and now that it's the mindset of like like cattle versus human being. That shit runs deep. You know what I'm saying? The deep, like you said, human lives. That he, he like our human lives aren't seen as human. It's, but it, we're not marketing is one of the biggest power how powers in the world. We're not marketed the same. Right. If you just really look at it, black people, black men are not marketed. No, we're we'll, yeah. more same. value as a motherfucker. When, when in certain contexts that they might pick, and of course, of course, they're not because I don't want people to be like. We're on video. Of course, you're not saying all white people. I hate that you have to almost make that disclaimer. Mm-hmm. You, the white people know which white people we're talking you about. You always know which one. You know what I'm saying, bro? I, even, I made this post recently. I said, even white people tired of white people shit. Because the white people that's tired, they know. They know. They got a lot of white people that know, that get it. You're like, come on, bro. But unfortunately, when you take up 60% of the fucking country, there's going to be a lot on both sides. Because it's just a lot of you motherfuckers. Just period. You it know, know what I'm saying? It's like, dog, you see it when it happens to your own. You see it in comic books. But you like you can't see it when it happens to like especially. Oh, you can see it through metaphors. If we if we make a movie with a bunch of uh, rabbits and a fucking fox, you can see oppression. If we make a a movie with like we we hide it through whatever means we hide it, you can see it. But when it's right, like you say X Men or something, you can see it. But when it's right in your fucking face, some of you now now you gotta play fucking forty eight hour detective Mm -hmm. and figure out what this man caused himself to get himself shot. And 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 when we still get like in twenty twenty, like nothing that bothers me is. We're in on your bullshit, and y'all still do the same tactics. Like that, that meme also is going viral about how black people are the only ones that are um, blamed for for their murder or some shit like that, and we always demonize our murder. Um, Arbery, they started coming up with uh, how he shoplifted. And, like, why in the fuck? <laughs> There's a dead guy, like, and they always do it. And I'm like, they gotta t- they gotta t- but I'm like, gee, they always do it. We're, and like, I mean, at one point, no one was calling it out. It was just something that, like, like our parents and grandparents knew that they did. But at, and like in our generation, like internet age, 20s, 2010s, we're and like, shit, come on, we've bro. been calling this out. Like, look what they do every time, guys, and then they still do it. Yep. And I'm like, I, I, I'm just like flabbergasted at so much like that's what kind of just kind of like that's the numbing agent for for me is like 
we call this shit out time after time, yet y'all still do it, no matter how much we point that shit out to you. Like, you still do this shit, like, right in our fucking face. It's like... That's as, the formula for numbness, huh? It's almost like as a man, oftentimes, like... And this is just a, this is a other topic, but a lot of times, like, you know what I mean? We, our emotions... We, we don't, like... Women, they get they get the um I guess I won't say the word coward, but in our society, like they get to their their emotions are encouraged to be nurturing or encouraged like they they're encouraged to have the different facets of emotion. While a lot of times through like conditioning, toxic masculinity, whatever you want to call it, a lot of our emotions we get taught to pack in and shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? So many times we're angry before we're angry before we're sad, even though we're probably sad from the jump, mm-hmm. and we just express it as anger. Mm-hmm. But when that anger starts subsides, that's when you really be feeling the sorrow that it really was supposed to be. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's how this almost feels. It's like when I was like just like years ago, I was angry, 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 angry. I'm still angry now, but I'm really sad. Like that fire is still there, dog. But it's like, like you, it it, 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 it wears on you seeing people like you yeah. get killed all the time. But then they make it a show and they make it a parade. We got Biden all, and I'm stuck in Biden. I'm stuck saying, yeah. And I'm like, damn, bitch. Like, and Biden coming, dog. It's like one of those things of I'm stuck between it's shut the, worst, the fuck the up and it's coming. about time. Because I'm like, as a Democratic nominee. Like yes, you he need. He can't say he can't not say something. I mean, but it's and, like damn. But bro, but, we what know. What a time for you to say something. But like we, because we know like, your shit ain't genuine. Like, this is that right? This is this is a. This is like oh, what a come up for you. We we see it too smooth. It's like bitch, like shut up, Biden. But if, but if you, you did don't say, say nothing, nothing, I said like, where the fuck you at? But right. like, it's, ugh, it's, 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 it's a you're the up worst situation. nominee ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, ugh, it's fucked up. Ugh, bro. I'm ashamed of the whole Democratic Party. I'm ashamed that uh for like a lot of this shit, but. Man, I don't know, dog. It's like the when you say you gotta vote these niggas in and this and the third, but it's like these niggas that really been controlling power never seem to get out of power in any kind of house. And it seemed like whoever they put in power next, they be some other old motherfucker dog with old ass fucking crusted ass values and crusted ass morale. Because they don't yeah, want to clean like, that bitch out. And that's we spoke about that many times here, son. Like it makes no sense for motherfuckers that have been basically poisoned by previous generations that you can't tell me a bias doesn't exist to still be making the rules for future generations that they won't even live to see. That's kind of fucked up when you got 70 year olds in the house. Hey, I ain't meaning to be ages, bro, but come on. Especially when there's 70 year olds that live, 70 year old white people that live through a lot of fuckery, man. Son. Shuffle the deck. Let me tell you something, dog. I respect American capitalism a lot more. If they give everyone an equal chance to fuck over everybody. You know what I mean? But that means breaking us off. That's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> that means a lot of me shuffling the deck. It means breaking us like, off. That means, ideal that means equally distributing power. You know what I mean? Like that 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 means so many things that's too noble for us. I'm because say, like can you can you even do that? Can or will? Can. Can it's, you evenly distribute power? Like evenly in terms of what? Evilly in terms of um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like you like if we, if we like what the Oscars kind of did. Let's use them as an example. They cleared out all the white people in the voting house and by equity. That's the word. So it's like if it's okay, in okay, I'll, I'll take equity. you know what I mean. Like like right. like even out by equitable means would make sense. You know okay. what I mean. You need and if you do the numbers, you need this amount to act to even this amount of black people, this amount of Asians, or this amount of whatever to equal off this amount of whites or this amount of males or this. You know what I mean. You gotta there's there's the number crunchers who could do it, but Again, would our country and government do it for real? <laughs> the presidents that would, the, the nominees that would do things like that never make it to the end. They you always, they the always scare later. the moderates. Most of the power, mm-hmm. like the power that matters in this country is like confined to little sections. And to like evenly distribute power would effectively like make all those sections obsolete. And that's what they're afraid of because mm-hmm. that's the thing too. That that was one of the most that's one of the most heartbreaking things about like when you look at this this pandemic shit, you know what I mean? Of y'all motherfuckers don't really care about people dying as much as business and economy and yeah. capitalism thriving. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's scary as shit. That's scary as shit when you take that in. Mm-hmm. People dying is not a thing. It's just really about the numbers. It's, it's just about, really about it's the money. It's about the numbers. And as it's always been. And it continues to be, and then no matter how blatant it gets, it's 
It's they have I mean, to, no, they that's have why to drive the American way. It's the American way. That's they have to drive the country at the end of the fucking day, son. That's what I'm like, but they don't have to. They can't help themselves. They don't have to. Well, well I mean, in, in their, their mind, mind. They, they have to. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they're going to do. As long as there's corporate interest involved mm-hmm. in law, mm-hmm. what the fuck? Mm-hmm. No. And this the age old. Government, yeah, dog, it's too old. Some People talking about the government is being bought out. No, the government is bought <laughs> The government been, been bought, bought out government by these is, companies a, a long selling, time ago. The government's an ass-selling company, you know what I'm saying? I mean, what's the word? Um, mm. You sell that ass, you fuck us, we'll let it's you know. It's the corporatocracy. Not not that, but yes. But what's what's them people? The people that influence um, the voters. Uh, I can't think of the word. Lobbyists? Lobbyists. The uh, fact that that even exists... Mm-hmm. Undermine so much that this country, quote unquote, is supposed mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, Donald, how can Donald these interests lobby a, a, a person to do something for their interests, and their interests half the time have nothing to do with the interests of the people? So, no matter how much the people vote, if that lobby is coming and swipe it through, it's it the same really fucking jerking circle. And they go back to what I said earlier we all know this, and it's still happening. It's like, damn, you fucking my wife in front of me. And I just gotta watch that shit. Yep, they ain't gonna fuck you too. <laughs> yep, and you. And I gotta take that shit. Like what? Y'all look in the mirror, dog. Because the honestly, by the country, like the population, like we're just not pissed off enough yet as a whole to effect change. If we if we were, we would mobilize. But like, too many people are still. Um, essentially satisfied with the fucking status quo like nobody really wants to put in the fucking work because like that's what it's actually gonna take it's Mo- gonna take real work yeah because motherfuckers going to crazy do. to put down it because they gotta put down yeah. their iphones and shit yeah. motherfuckers going crazy because they can't go outside niggas want to stay fucking guns. home though niggas don't want to do nothing niggas don't do no real work for nothing real dog niggas hope they can do it online like that's what they want to fucking do but yeah, it's like no yeah they can rather march online niggas gotta mobilize to like make the government do things no wait pause no 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 no, I Maybe will say uh, this. This will, no, this no. This asterisk. I will say. I, I, I feel everything you're saying, but online has proven because that's where the world is. People have, mobilizing online has gotten this motherfucker. These people arrested. So I will say there's power within that. I mean, there's power there's, within there's that because like that's, that's new age. What you're saying now wrong, but I'm just saying there's yeah. power within that as well. But a little bit. It, it's a, it's, but, but you, but you, but you know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. No, Sam, I, I know right? what you're saying, Sam. But I'm just saying I don't want to like have old ways because no, like the the few the few the further we go in the future, the more power that is about to start having. So I'm not, I don't want to denigrate that power, but it's not even just I want to say this too. It's not even just that. We're not pissed off enough. Is is that on top of? It's a different time, and a, like we've won certain things, but we did like those victories, those 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 wins. Those battles didn't affect the war. No, 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 no. They did affect the war, and that's the problem. Like we didn't win the war. It's like it's, it's like it's like what I said. Okay, I said I was talking about this recently online. Um, a lot of like a lot of people. It's, it's ironic. A lot of people hate. A lot of black people hate Barack because he black. And they like people like what you talking about. I'm like because the expectations that you put on Barack because he was a black president. You thought that nigga was gonna be out. You thought he was gonna right. be able to do everything yeah. for black people, and because right. you placed certain expectations on him. Truthfully, if Obama did everything he did in his presidency, that he did in his presidency the exact same way, but he was white. A lot of y'all black people that hate him wouldn't even hate him. Right. Y'all would love him. Bill Clinton yeah, did way. Bill Clinton did way worse shit, and y'all let him slide because he was way charismatic and shit. You know what I mean? But I bet you any fucking money if he was just as cool, just as every thing that Barack was but he was a white man y'all wouldn't have those black expectations so in a weird way his blackness is one of the is intrinsic to part of the reason why y'all hating on this man when truthfully he couldn't be the radical he the first nigga in right he the first one Jackie Robinson one couldn't one come in that bitch being like hey why did he get you know what I mean yeah. you gotta come in and play it a certain way right. so the next motherfucker can do things and it, like people don't be seeing the long no, fucking the, game we need a first of, of his time dog you're just and it's a white man's game. Yeah. You better learn how to play ball before you start talking about bending and breaking rules. Bro, and he did what he could, but my point is, Barack was supposed to just be like, a lot of people thought Barack was the finish line. He was the win. And no, Barack was just the first just hit. The first one. It, was, it was supposed to be the first lick, and people gave up their voting power and gave up so much shit and got lax because they thought that was going to just be the win for right. black people. Mm-hmm. And that's and that's what, and, but that's what, But the problem overall with you talking about um, the apathy or when you talk about the spoilness. It's like, it's because we have won some 
a lot of us have gotten complacent, complacent. Some I'm of saying. us have gotten Better good. Well, I'm complacent. good, so I ain't worrying about who ain't good. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that and, split and, us in a manner that we weren't split in previous generations. Yeah, and honestly, mm-hmm. that's like simply what I mean by when I say that we're not pissed off enough. That just really means that we just become very complacent in this whole whole fucking shit. We're not you even together because there's like, a section that's pissed, but there's a yeah, section. But, and like at one point they like say we're split. Yeah, and, right. it's, it's split, and like, at one point the section that was good and privileged was smaller. Mm-hmm. But now there's a lot of successful black people and a lot of black people don't have to deal with racism right. head not on. Like, yeah. yeah, like not or, the same same. Or, or, or they have to deal, deal with it, but they pay they're cool with paying the price that they're paying because there's a section of black people that never could pay anything to to be more comfortable in dealing with it. Or what have you. There's so well, many I'm about to say when you got money, dog, it's cause there's a thing about like Racism, we might all deal with it on some scale, but like, if you could just take away all the other problems of depression, then deal with it. like, if I could take away with being broke and fucking stuck in poverty, poverty, and all this other shit in the third, if all in my battle was racism, right, then I could deal with that. And that's what they you know be what thinking, saying? and that's what be happening because a lot more of us like because I can go back to my castle with my yeah, fucking nice you can, fruits. You can just go home. Yeah, you know. And some people don't want to remember that they black. Mm-hmm. Some people don't want to be taken back to any of it. Some people want to get away from... Like, it's so much that goes into it. It's such a multifaceted issue when we look at black America. And I get... Like, now... when And I get what you're saying about we're not pissed off enough. It's like, man, like... Like, it's going to take a, a, a real bombing. Like, what's it going to fucking take? Because this going to be just... This This has become annual. And that's mm-hmm. a problem. Right. You know what I mean? The next one... Like, we had two in a week. We had two in a week. At one point, two in a week probably would have caused a riot. Now it causes, like... Online petitions, just, just, yeah, just online rage. On NAACP, which, you know, it's not said still, but goddamn, that I'm works over. too. But no, I'm saying like, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that I'm expecting us to like specifically riot, right? Right. But the Correct. energy that it took black people of that time, the pistosity Correct. to riot. If exactly. you, if we took, if us all, if we all took that online, because we don't all even take that online. Right. It's like a yeah. section of people See, who are like, kind of like, mad, yeah. and there's in infighting between us about how important it is and all right. this other bullshit. And it's, it's just it'd be bullshit, and it's like certain things happen, but you'd be like, damn, how interesting would it be if everyone was equally mad and about doing shit? If the online then became something in person, then became, but it's like it happens for a section of us. Because I want to say this too: they got motherfuckers that don't look up. There's always people working. There's always people working. They got civil mm-hmm. rights agents out there at all times that are working. That's doing the hard work. There's that people out there every it's day always, the man. Doing but guys' work for real. So don't be like, we. I hate when people are like we ain't even doing nothing. Like, no, you're yeah, not doing nothing. A lot of people, really doing yeah, shit. people are, are on the but it's not sure. enough support. It's just not enough support. Also, it's not enough knowledge of that they're doing it. Not enough education. Yeah. And like, and not enough people seeking to it because again, when you got that complacent, that complicitness, and then almost that shame, because yeah, I throw that in there too. There's some people that are inherently ashamed of our history. And ashamed of the stereotypes, so then they kind of to they kind of block it out. Hmm. Like you said, they'll bubble themselves, and you mm-hmm. like, bro, like if you would help, it would it would help. And but you, some of them is like, uh, uh-uh, I don't want it. And it's hard to see. I throw some money, and that's about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to deal with it. It's hard to still see, like you know, the fact that it's still all right. We're talking about visuals and shit, and it's like everything that you see is white. You know what I'm saying? Everything in your magazine is white. Fuck, I was going so with it when you said that last part. I threw me up a little bit. I'm glad it's getting better now, though. But I mean, better. we're they, grown adults in 2020. Like this, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the virus is, is, is growing it's just while we're growing. Right. You dig? And it's learning new ways to still be a virus. And we, and we gotta find new ways to keep killing it. It doesn't wanna die. It's crazy when the Black Mirror creator said they're not making a new season because the world currently is too bleak. Yeah. And they feel like they would be adding to the bleakness of they the would, world. Because they'd be touching on topics. <laughs> it was like, we don't even want to add to it. We were just for it. This is a company said, we're going to go making money because America is so fucked up right now. That's crazy. You hear me? I'm sure they got a nice little stash, though. And on the opposite end of it, uh, that show mm-hmm. um, Hollywood that Ryan Murphy did, he said that's why his point was for optimism. Because, man, on that show, it's set in, the, like, 1948, going into the 1950s and such. And, like, if you watch it, knowing how history really go, you'll be like, wait, ain't no fucking way this would have happened. But he said that was the point. He wanted to make an alternative... Re- like, it's almost like, remember we had that thing about the art history about what if, like... 
because the Confederacy would have won. Mm-hmm. His he he making a, a, a history, but it's what if you would have allowed a black writer's script to be made in 1948? If you would have allowed a black chi- a black lead actress, if you would allow you know what I mean? What would he, what what may have happened in a more optimistic world in, in history? And they still have the hardships of racism and shit. But his point was to write a win for the little guy. Mm-hmm. And he's he, like, in today's times, everything's so fucking bleak and crazy. I wanted something positive, and I was like, you know what? Off That's that, because. Because if you watch it too hard, you'd be like, man, that would never have happened. But thanks for this fiction, because I would rather that happen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's one nomination I could give for Hollywood. <laughs> Shit, I can tell how many slave movies I wish the slaves would rise up and start killing the folks and they all get back to the ship or something. Gee, Nate Parker fucked it up by having all that bullshit he was on, son. Because that, that movie would have been much bigger if he wouldn't have, if he wouldn't, wouldn't have been so stubborn about his history and such. You know right. what I'm saying? Because, like, like you said, man, um, I wish... Um, the Harry Tubman Demon Slayer that the homie David Crownson created. That's a cool little comic book that's out. Imagine if they made a movie of that. Harry Tubman killing demons and fucking vampires and shit. Like, I would, like, flip. I buy it. Bro, that's the thing. You don't, like, you don't have to tell the same story shit. all the fucking time. Now, yeah. I, I understand why a slave movie needs to have needs to you shouldn't you shouldn't completely destroy that genre of film because every generation has hey, to know. Hey, Lincoln Vampire Slayer. So you can't tell me we ain't turn around a lot of social uh, up people to some cool ass hero back in the day with some gangsta ass shit. That's not what I'm defending, but yeah, that's actually absolutely right. All I'm saying is I'm saying to like some people are like I'm tired of slave movies. I'm like no, there's they, there's a reason for them to exist, but we don't have to be that don't have to be the only thing. To exist, right? You I know think what I'm we saying? have enough slave movies. Yeah, if I can be frank. No, but I'm not saying make one every year. But my point is make other things so it don't feel like oh, the, all these slave movies. Yeah. Because 20 years from now, some new director might have some new way of showing that same topic, and I don't want to yeah. stifle him right. or her. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. all I'm saying from an artistic standpoint. But say, son, when if you, you limit, you know, if you want to make a, a black catch a Freeman. Anything. You know what I'm saying? Just don't yeah, don't limit play us play. to just that. Right. We yeah. can make fantasy. We can make sci fi. We can we make, make all type of shit. All though. kind of shit, but they limit us anything. Any fucking thing. We really can. And that's what I would love to see more of. Just switching up shit. Earl Thomas L that gun point by seven war chick. Oh wait, that girl from the seven war? <laughs> His wife. She from the seven. That's why everybody's right by oh, laughing at the new uh, but uh, Raven safety Earl Thomas asked fans for prayers and family <laughs> while he and his family were seven. First, from the seven. <laughs> I, I threw that. Hard head from That's the seven. You sure what in there? Look like it's in there, dog. From the seven. Before the arrival, they said we was that a black female wearing an orange sweater with a knife in her hand, later identified as Nina Thomas, was chasing a shirtless black male, later identified as Earl Thomas, with a pistol in his hand around a vehicle. According to Nina, Thomas left their home, home early in the day after the couple were arguing about Thomas drinking. However, later that day, she decided to check on his location using his Snapchat. <laughs> After, Stupid ass dude. After oh, logging into Thomas Snapchat, she discovered a video of Thomas and another woman. From there, she found his location through the app and found Earl and his brother Seth with two other women at the No, end. not my <laughs> brother here with you cheating. You must be out there doing football with my brother. Y'all are cheating together. Nina, Nina reportedly admitted to bringing Thomas's nine millimeter with the intention to scare him. One of the women in the house recorded Jeez. the altercation on their cell phone. See these recordings, y'all. Which shows footage of Nina holding a gun to Thomas' head from less than oh. a foot away, and it can be clearly seen that Nina's finger was finger was on the trigger, and the safety is disengaged. Oh my that, that god! There was definitely one in the chamber. According to Earl, Nina also pointed the gun at the women in the house, shouting, "I got some for all you hoes!" Nah, <laughs> I got some for all you hoes. All you bitches about to die. Thomas was able to wrestle the gun away from Nina. Cops arrested Nina, who was booked for burglary of a residence with intent to commit aggravated assault with a daily weapon and family violence. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah. It's not cool. You can't be holding guns in niggas' heads, man. Hey, dog. You can't. I don't know what kind of fucking good fella Kara moment you was having. Uh, but, um. Because she just slipped and shot this nigga. I'll tell you, you one thing. He learned his lesson, murder. too, though. Not to fuck with her again like that. Cheat on her. Or at least, if anything. Now I get caught up on your social media Snapchat with your cheating and there was so much was wrong here. <laughs> so much was wrong here. And, and your brother right there, like your like the fake your brother there, he was like, Man, listen, I'm just trying to live that football life here. <laughs> bro, like, damn, G, and you married or whatever. It's so much is wrong here, bro. Yes, let's not be uh, holding guns to your fucking is is one woman jumped on there and it was like, see what y'all men make us do? Get the fuck out of here. Oh lady. <laughs> 
I say, Whoa, oh, fuck you. We make um, you grab a gun and point it to our head. Yeah, and all right. There's a lot of people that get cheated on and don't react like this. Lots. <laughs> I don't think it's a lot of people that you, I cheated on you, you take my life. Yeah, we don't put that on the gym. Did you, did you just try to I turn, turn so. that Still around? Being. Like, did you just try to. <laughs> Did you do that? No, man. This is gonna be another podcast see. episode. I'm gonna bring up that article. I mean, that that statement I made that all the women sounded like niggas about men and our emotions, but we oh, ain't got time for that today. Yeah, that's but that was one of the trippiest things to see. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, yeah. <laughs> next time, next time. Another crazy ass thing that's that, that's in this air two is three family members charged after security guard is shot to death over face mask dispute in Flint. I yeah, hate, they should go to jail. I, all of them. I, I hate everything about they this. They shot the security guard dead at Family Dollar during this dispute over the face mask. The prosecutor says a 43-year-old security guard, Calvin Monerlin, Monerlin, Calvin Monerlin, oh, was wow. shot and killed at the store on Fifth Avenue. Lady says Monerlin got into an argument with a woman named Charmel T, 45, when he told her she needed to wear face masks while inside the store. Authorities say T began yelling at Monerlin and spit at him. Manuelin told her to leave the store and told the cashier not to serve her. The woman left the store and a short time later, her husband and her son went to the store and confronted the security guard. Her son identified as Ram- Ramon Yeah. This man's name is Ramon Yeah. <laughs> what does that say? R-A-M-O-N-Y-E-A. That says Ramon Yeah. Ramon Yeah. It could be Ramon Yeah, but I'm going to say Ramon Yeah. Ramon Yeah. <laughs> Ramon, read Ramon Yeah. Ramon Yeah. Ramon Yeah, Bishop. Wow. <laughs> it's the last they have then pulled out a gun and shot Manerlin in the back of the head. This wasn't oh. about the face mask, though. It's about his fucking ego, son. You felt played and you shot and killed this fucking Niggas ass. like you is why niggas like my nigga that was jogging get shot. Right. Right. The exact reason, son. That's the exact reason why, dude. Because you, you that's dumb shit. No they, way in the world is that not dumb shit. Put on a mask, dog. Like, we in a fucking pandemic, son. Like, Nigga just want you to be safe. Bruh. Nigga was just trying to help you, son. Bruh. And here go this, bruh. Even if it wasn't about the mask. If, let's say Charmel got an argument with the security guard. There's no reason for Charmel to come back with people to intimidate, fight, kill, and shoot, kill, any and, piece and, of and that. Dude. Yeah. Have your yeah, fight, yeah, have your argument. Don't add up. Leaf. Don't add up. Leaf. You had to go. shoot this man, dog. You, right. you had to shoot this man. And I'm looking at the father like, son, so you knew this man had the gun on him the whole time? Or uh, like like what's up with that dog? You yeah y'all plotted this murder so y'all y'all it's definitely murder one because you brought the gun there with some kind of intent to do some kind of harm. I hope they go to jail. You know how we talking about those middle America white people, the same way that progressive white people that we know they're smarter than them and get get life and have decency and empathy to them, and they look at them like what the fuck is wrong with them rednecks? That's how we be looking at these yeah, type of black these people type like say like, right. Like, the fuck? <laughs> like, right. What are you doing here? Right. Why? That was just the stupidest of stupid cases, dog. I hated that one. Oh, like, I really Thank hate that. Thank you for sending us back. Like, like that's the that's the type of shit I truly hate in this fucking world. I mean, dog, you said we can't. You saying with dog, we got to be perfect as a culture and as a race. It ain't but, about that, dog. Like, like dog, this that is, was just pure fuckery, dog. This has nothing to do with being perfect, dog. It don't take a perfect person not to kill some fucking body behind some shit like this, dog. Like that don't take. I hate it, son. Literally hate it. Literally, like there, there's there's no words for that. It's embarrassing. It's, it's like really embarrassing, son. Because 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 it truthfully, dog. Because we sit up here at the top. It makes shit harder. At it the, makes everything harder for us, dog. Like this don't help at all, son. Like this shit makes it harder for niggas like us who don't want nothing to do with that shit. Because like white people in 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 general, like fuck the not all white people, just in general. They latch on to these kinds of fucking and coon and coon ass ass black people. They latch on to this fucking shit, and that's the type of shit that they use as they ammo to yep. justify their fucking fear when they kill our fucking ass for jogging. Yup. Like, no. like niggas want to be fucking hood and shit and fucking like prop this fucking shit up so fucking bad, son. Like. We, we it, have to work on this. Son, it's so sick, dog. Because, like, motherfuckers will be on YouTube with their guns and their money and all this. And I'm like, gee, like, some of y'all, a lot of y'all ain't never even been from the hood. Y'all just want to ride the culture <sighs> of right. that. You just Not even taking that. in, like, like, none, like, like you just said, it's just so frustrating that for whatever reason, we can't let that go. 
right. as far as taking it seriously. Because right, I'm saying, because yeah. you know what I mean? Because like I love mafia movies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying eliminate a mafia movie. Right. I ain't saying don't make a good hood movie. Right. You know what I mean? I ain't Correct. saying you can't have gangster rap music. Right. But I'm saying like let's take in what's fantasy and teach mm-hmm. it as such. Like this should be considered yeah, fantasy. This is just fantasy. And if it's going on in your life for real, the thing that we should be instilling is we try to get you out of that, homie. Right. If you're a privileged bro, you shouldn't want it. And if you're in it, you should be trying to fight you to get up to out, to of get out of it. But the whole thought of romanticizing it and thinking that, right. oh, I'm Thank so hard, you. I'm so big, I'm so heavy. If I kill me a nigga, now all our lives are ruined. Like, what the fuck? And then, once again, the marketing of us then becomes this. The right. marketing of all of us all of then us. becomes this. That's and then, the well, like, you, you just all said it. Us. You just said it. And that shit is just the most angering thing about everything. Right. Like, fuck. Like, it's how, like it's, all of us. You, you, trying to, you trying to fill these two holes and then y'all motherfuckers putting new holes in the boat. Like, at the top of the podcast, you talking about, damn, we're not what the stereotype is. Oh, meanwhile, the stereotype. <laughs> Black and white. Black and white, dog. Mm-mm. Yeah. I hate it. And unfortunately, nigga ain't got no bow. You ain't got no, like, no beautiful, well, you mean you mean you come by? No, nigga. This shit's fucked. Like, it's really fucked up. And we need to move the fuck away from it. Or at least put it in its proper box. When I see cases like this, I get real angry. But then I just... Ooh, we live cases like this. We from New Orleans, G. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking about we about to get to the dose of North America next. And I'm like, whoa. Like, our every every day. Mm-hmm. And I be, I be breaking down, like, what takes a nigga to, to, to like... I start to get too much into my own mind of, of, like, the psychiatric part of why you're doing this. But, and what's the whole reason behind it all, the bigger picture. So that's why I guess for hard of me as I listen, as I get angry, the, I guess what don't make me, make me less angry and more inquisitive is to, to be like, Damn, dog, you set us back, but it's like I I, I started to feel bad. I started I started to feel bad and sad again because like, y'all know better at the time. Right, like right, dog, it's, 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 it's like because I understand yeah. the bigger picture the of like why thing. you like you it's got not just, in that situation. like is this your fault as a human being and a nigga that, that made a but, choice, but as a grand scheme of how all this came to this moment in your life to make this choice, yeah. I understand that none of this really was your fault. Like and it's like this it did like you like made the, a bad decision, you but made, you was like you like, got poor. you were, you were fucked to make bad decisions from jump. Yeah, and that's so fucked. But you do that is to, fucked up. But I'm I no, I, I I'm not making excuses to say that that's not to, that's not punish you. It's just you I'm, can't help but see. I it. can't help you. I can't help but see it I and feel like see it. And, 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 and tragedy. Like, yeah, it's a tragedy. I'm like, dog, he, you killed this man and fucked up the system. You a lost nigga of the system, and you about to get lost deeper into another system. Like, you was born lost in the system, and they about to trap your ass deeper in the system. I said this before, It's bro. like a sad cycle. It, it's so fucking unfortunate to have the motherfuckers that be killing us getting paid, but the, that, the motherfuckers creating the stereotype are also the motherfuckers killing us for the stereotype. You know what I'm saying? You throw motherfuckers in cages, they become animals, and then you shoot the animal after you put them in a the fucking cage. You have the option not to put the motherfucker in the cage, though. And y'all keep ignoring that option generation after generation. That's why I was happy when everybody kept saying, I said, no, that's why I was so pissed off how people were taking Diddy fucked up when Diddy was saying, I'm going to hold my vote hostage and let Biden and some of these motherfuckers give so us some of our vote. Right they was like, what you mean, Diddy, did you, did you tell people not to vote? This nigga was not saying not to vote. This nigga was saying, look, we often just always ride with whatever the Democrats Democrats and Republicans give us. Really and at some on, point, us as black people gotta be like, nigga, you gotta have an agenda for us. We gotta have some promise. Pander to me or something, because half the time, all you do is tell our every generation the same bullshit, which is basically nothing, nothing. and we keep getting the same fucking foot in our More mouth. More jobs for black folks. Come on. So yeah, for, how can we want jobs for black folks and if they have many jobs for white folks? And so, and so <laughs> many black people. Now you was, gonna promise me more jobs? Bitch. Fuck out of here. <laughs> but so many of us was throwing Diddy under the bus <laughs> saying, oh, his rich ass must have been bought. And I'm like, yo, Pete, when he's saying, y'all don't even want more for yourselves to even think like, oh, whoa, my vote should be worth something. Because, like, dog, and that's but, the, but, that's but, the but then I understand, I understand why they mad. You do, I do, and too. that's what's the sad part about. Like, because I understand, dog. Like, Diddy don't have to worry about eating Beyonce sausage, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, hit, like whatever goes in his election, he's gonna be all right. But with you, you dig, of course. Like, you know, you kind of gotta roll with the punches because you feel powerless. But you don't have to roll with the punches. You don't. You don't. But that's the mental. Because it's the thing too for for a nigga like Biden who even earned that position for real, my nigga. We should make this nigga work. Now, just recently he dropped the supposed black agenda thing because people kept talking about it. Yeah. That, 
Yeah, he summed up. It's the Biden summed plan, son. I can look it up. I didn't read the details. It basically some I mean, BS. I, it was just broad. That's my thing. Yeah. That's it's my always thing about, broad. That's my thing. always like, but so that's like, like broad is BS. But guess yeah. what? But no, but both. But that's what I said. It's about Yang and Elizabeth Warren and some of Biden's and um, um, Bernie shit. They have specifics, yeah, especially Warren. Specific. Warren has some black shit specifically that she wanted to do for us. Mm -hmm. But people wasn't, you know, we... Whatever. Yeah. But like when you look at Biden, dog, it's like the same thing when he came out about justice for Aubrey, for Ahmad. I'm like, yo, you are like, you like, when we talked about how Hillary seemed like she was pandering, nigga, you seem like the personification of a, of the, of the bad, of the, of the, of the sickening kind of pandering. Cause see, when Obama yeah. said it, it wasn't pandering, dog. Oh, say what? But what he said about Trayvon Martin when it first came out. Because you know, he said the Trayvon would look like me and it was the truth. Come on, but but Biden, over your years, you've done and said a lot of fucking rapey, racist shit. Honestly, Biden, you were really hitting behind Barack's shadow of, of, of light and things. That's how he got the nomination because you know he was saying? so close to Barack. But my point is, dog, he is coasting his way into all this shit, G. And every time he pop up with something for us, it's always because, it's always feel fake. Mike got hot sauce in his bag. Bruh, he's... He probably got all the fucking hot sauce and the Tony Satchery and shit. But it's like, bro, it, it, it's just so like, I was so mad. I was like, dog, Diddy telling us some some real shit. I ain't saying don't vote. He ain't saying don't vote. But motherfuckers, we need to see more power. Yeah, we, we need see, to vote with like, more Like, just wake up to that message. Like, you know, I don't give a fuck how you feel about Diddy or anything. Wake up to the message of like, son, let's really make some real serious demands. We need Let's to become really, more, you know, like, educated on the fucking process, though. Like, I'm going to keep on preaching that. Like, not enough people even know where to begin when it comes to choosing politicians. Like, shouldn't they get on a soapbox and start, like, being like, hey, guys, da, 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 what the fuck? I don't understand. I don't know. But but you know what else? I the thing, because we're talking about, like, the, the media and every time about technology, like, how it's a good thing to be online and made us together. And some of us are made together on that, but online also brought us separate because, like, the human interaction that needs to come together is, is something special. It's something that can't really be made online. And the thing is, online can, like, if, if we could just find a way to combine the two, if online can just make us come together physically, like how we do to come together online, and really make some noise like that, for real, as a unit, like it does online, it'll make some noise. Because, like you said, online, it does make noise. It makes a rumble, dog. That fucking video with the person, shit go crazy. That nigga do was telling me about this thing called um, Twitter Do Your Thing. Well, like if somebody like post some shit super racy or super out of the box, nigga put Twitter do your thing and they'll get so many retweets that Twitter just take you off that motherfucker without any word or nothing like that. Just take you off. And so like if we can have that power with human interaction, we got to find a way to get back to on a human level because we don't want to talk to each other physically. We don't. Everybody so I'm in my own space. I mean, and, and, and I, I allow you in through social media because I get to allow you in. That's just that's part of the problem. That's all I can say because there's people doing what you're saying. But it's not it's not big and power like it's not big. power is so uh, saturated is, is that the word I want to go with and the niggas we fighting and we're about the internet power or like social power togetherness like and not saying that we're about it but oh, like we're worried about it but it's like they they got what I'm saying is like you know there's we gonna need everything to fight them I'm sorry I didn't mean to cut you off like that but I just wanted to just uh, in short say. Um, there's all all kinds of like new forms of power now. Yeah, I think, and um, I think we're still learning how to like control Execute. it all. Yeah, and like use it properly. You know, like social media power is new. You know, online power like that's something new, and we see what it can do, but we haven't seen what it could do like m maximally, like for the betterment of the population. And we've seen hints of it. Yeah, like we've just seen it like in fucking spurts. But and the like, thing, it's gonna get better because that's the thing too. Like just like how we talk about bullying, right? When we was young, getting bullied on, like to a lot of our generation, the concept of being bullied online is foreign. It's very foreign. Bullying for us was physical, but for them, right, no, like you didn't beat a nigga up, then you you are. Right, but, no but for them, bullying is way worse because it lasts social forever. Social embarrassment, yeah. The yeah. social embarrassment that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, nigga, if somebody could have, in all of our lives, someone probably whooped our ass, but no one would have ever seen the footage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, niggas who moves a whole other time to recreate themselves. <laughs> bro. Right. Put another time, nigga, put up that video. Ain't you that nigga that? Man, bro. it is that nigga. Bro. Like, that can happen to these younger kids. That's man. what I'm saying. So, the world, that's what I'm saying. So, I don't want to be, because so. I gotta, I gotta watch my perspective as an older millennial and looking at uh, 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 underestimating what the yeah. online world is because our grandkids and shit, the online world is the world is the fucking it's a, it's a real world. world. They love so that's shit, why bro. when you just said that thing about maximizing our powers, 
There's like avenues that are being maximized now, and there's avenues that we haven't even discovered yet. But like this, this like the, the online dog is gonna only get nuttier, which is why I'm like motherfuckers gotta pay attention. And there's another reason why I'm like you gotta shuffle the deck. Otherwise, what sense is it making? We can't keep coming into the new world with old world values, thinking, wondering why the fucking shirt don't fit. Goddamn, like come on. But uh, yeah, y'all, we about to get out of this, dog. Cause at the point, it just becomes a freaking headache. That was that a to fit of the day. Yeah, man. Why, man? Like, pay attention. That's all I can say to that. Pay attention, dog. Yeah. Peep the peep the hypocrisies, man. Because like, because at times we tell ourselves that we're powerless when we're not. Mm -hmm. But it's all. It's really a lot of times we're just ignorant. I think Are we we're, lazy? We're ignorant to another kind of power. There's just yeah. like another avenue of power that we haven't utilized yet, or there's one that we have which is not using it right yet. But like, there's there's something that's gonna like really like help us to become mobile for the cause in the way that we have to be to like make the real changes. We just haven't Nigga tapped into it. Nigga had to yet. shoot Michelle. What? Oh, you mean to get people that mad? Don't, yeah. don't, don't even say such a thing, right? Like he he just took me that. wrong level. Okay. All right, all right, all right, Oprah. Let's get to that. That's a good one, Barker. <laughs> right. Do what you gotta do to survive in these hard times. You better keep your strap on your lap when it's war time. I come from the city where the skinny niggas die, but I might be your father, so I gotta stay alive. That's why I spit more fire than the semi 45. Growing up in the jungle turned me to a warrior. Now I spit it better than Biggie, Jigga, and Nas. No disrespect, it's just my competitive drive. Crank the engine, I'm on the road to riches. Raku finish, I'm smoking O's and spinach. Bro, look what you started, I gotta kill it. I just hope you come and pay my bond when I finish. Even the judge told me that my bars are convicted Cause I get these rappers to death row with every sentence I hope you lame niggas stop fronting for these bitches Cause you ain't really ballin' little daddy, you penny pinching. And I ain't said I got a little homie, but I be grinding. Yeah, it's gonna take some patience, I know it's all in the timing My mama gave bread in the sky, her son shining I'm a Kimber like pipe, all I do is speak Oh yeah, we didn't apologize for the fact that Kim Jong is not dead He was created, he had a hoax on everybody Yeah, he was checking for traitors I boy said I almost cheated with trading. I almost had a rug on respond Right I see how y'all bitches feel about me Fair enough <laughs> Bill's Ryman, you still my nigga I saw you shed some tears Everybody else, fuck him Fuck, fuck all y'all. I'm gonna kill nigga, my man. sister tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> bitch, you thought you had this wrong? <laughs> you thought you was gonna wear the not... shoes? I'm gonna show you how I really get down. That bitch. was like really dumb though, because I was like, what do you expect, Kim? Come on, bro. You know everybody think you fucking crazy. Yeah. So, well, now they're gonna show them. Super termites are supposed to hit New Orleans soon. What after, the fuck is super termites? I don't know, because after the murder haunts, it's like, now we got super termites. I think they're just trying to fucking so fear. What are super termites? Like, That's did he eat more wood than the regular termites? Right, I guess they're like more termite than your average termite. Because termites termite look like fucking termites to me. They've been in my life all my life. And they're usually around from 8.30 to 10.30. The swarm has arrived. There are millions of six-legged, winged residents we all wish would keep their social distance. Uh, the foremost and subterranean termites began swarming the New Orleans area Tuesday, seen in the glow of streetlights and illuminated porches all over town. Um, I'm not about to read all this. At the end of the day, we got some super fucking termites. And it's just funny after hearing about murder, murder bees... Murder, murder, murder wasp or whatever. Oh, so I found out about the murder hornets don't really kill people, but they actually kill uh, bees. yeah it bees, which fucks up our ecosystem that kills us. But they, but they still do attack humans. They, they can. They can, and they do. They still do uh, administer um, an immense amount of pain. Ray Nagin free. My nigga. <laughs> Mr. Chocolate City himself. I mean, I don't fuck with Ray Nagin like that, but I'm happy he's free because they fucked him over, son. Like all the niggas that was doing scam, they locked you up, son. The mayor. Damn, son. Just go home, bro. Go home and shut the fuck up. Yeah, shut the fuck up and chill. Go home and uh, apparently, we have a sanitation strike coming through. Yeah, they well, not picking up the garbage. And I all right, I'm about to get a job. You about to be a, a garbage man? Watch how much they got to pay me. I mean, I know they're going to pay. I'm just asking. That's they what you about me. to do? Yeah, boy, they're going to pay me good. You're going to get some women, too. They say they got, you know, they say garbage man, fine. Yeah, they love garbage the man. They love, they also <laughs> say. Um, Jazz Fest, festing in place brought in 2 million people. That's trippy, man. Like, you festing know what I mean? Place. What like, it was a jazz fest situation where it's like they went, like, instead of jazz fest, a lot of, um, uh, Jelly, like, a lot of artists, you know, mm -hmm. they just was doing live streams of, you know, Shots, singing and shit. And Jelly Face was on a, uh, freaking, uh, news clip in the furthest, furthest fest in the place really? situation. That's dope. Can't give me all the time. got a couple man. of clips up there. We're like, gonna fight today, son. Right. You could drown us and we just gonna come back. Bruh, that's just how we do. Up the, up Set us on fire, we're gonna come back. 
We done went through both biblical things in New Orleans and still came back. And you know what, y'all? I'm not about to read. There was, there was a shootout. There was a Domino's employee that was motherfucking robbed, robbed and shot. There was and, a shootout? Bro, so much shit was happening in our city, bro. And after all that shit, we was talking about the Etouffee. I'm not. I'm fucking. Right, dog. We know New Orleans crazy. Y'all know it's New like, Orleans crazy. Going crazy. Give me a motherfucking New Orleans artist a shout out, Joe. Who who song should we throw in the local musician shout out, bro? Should we show, should, who should we throw out in the local musician shout out? What song? Um, damn, what song? Can we can we get get some Karen Green in there? What is that sound? That's outside. Motherfuckers, they give that on soundtrack. How about some Karen Green? Karen Green. myself to a built-in you it's just not worth it to conform to the world and be transformed to fit your purpose don't deny yourself just to be who you are just be who you are I am purposed to touch the lost and illuminate in the dark to bring dying fires to life with this spark I am spreading love everywhere I go Everywhere I go I say In darkness, I'll be the light You'll be the light, I'll be the light In Perfections, hey It's what makes you unique And determines your direction But don't let those fools Come and mess up your connections Get to where you need to be You're so worth it And to realize that it will set you apart It matters not your stage But the of your heart Just be a light and shine everywhere you go Everywhere you go Go You about to get into that? No, huh? Bitch, I know you lying. Bitch, I know you fucking lying. I know you fucking lying. Bitch, I know you fucking lying. I know you fucking lying. I know you fucking lying. So apparently, in all the shit that's going on, we're not even giving a fuck that uh, they they released the UFO pictures. Yeah, what's up with that? I, I was like, really <laughs> what's going on? All right, so it's just a white dot. Now, for one thing, I want to say this, dog. UFO stands for what? Unidentified right. flying right. object. Yeah, it don't mean it, it's like an alien. Right. right. It's just unidentified. We exactly. Don't know exactly what it is. Right. So if the government wanted to just play with words, just like, to yeah, play we with people. something we can identify. Yo, they can just throw this out here. Now, when they talk about the just puppeteers with the strings and who's that running shit. That was some puppeteers. Move yeah, right. that was some shit. Out the blue. Send the UFO. <laughs> That's what it felt like though, G. It felt like sending UFO news. Yeah. Let's fuck with him some more. Yeah. The murder hornets wasn't enough. It's not even called it's murder. I keep saying murder hornets as a friend of mine said. That's what we gonna start calling the hornets. I was like, all right, yeah, we are the murder hornets now. Shouts out to basketball and cool. hornets. Yeah. But they're not murder hornets, they were murder bees. But whatever. If the murder bees didn't make enough of a, a, a blip, motherfucker, we're gonna send out the UFOs. Here's this maybe alien. 
But the Pentagon has officially released three short videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena that had previously been released by a private company. The video show what appears to be an unidentified flying objects rapidly moving while recorded by infrared cameras. Two of the vehicles videos contain service members reacting in awe at how quickly the objects are moving. One boy speculates that it could be a drone. <laughs> well, maybe. Motherfucking maybe, nigga. Maybe. <laughs> Come on. It could be. The Navy previously acknowledged the veracity of the videos in September of last year, but now they're viral. Uh huh. They're officially releasing them now in order to clear up any misconceptions of the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real, or whether or not there's more to the videos. After a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems. In other words, we ain't getting ratted on in any kind of way, so, you know, y'all can speculate however you want to speculate. Yeah. <laughs> Give that. Second, it's just funny, B. Like, so much, like, like you keep saying, so much is going on right now that that was a blip. Like, 10 years ago, that would have been a big deal. Mm -hmm. That was a like, blip. But now it's like, really? Y'all gonna throw aliens now? Come on, dog. We Come don't care. On, dog. We don't give a fuck. Uh, DMX wants to battle Jay-Z in uh, one of those versus battles. Man, listen, Jay -Z. I'm like, I'm like, DMX, people, DMX, you bro. need to, you need to stop battling yourself and like, you know, find win over that battle. I mean, I mean, he's been doing good lately, but it's like, I mean, I, maybe that'd be good for his spirit too, for him, even if he win or lose, just somebody to have fun with him and Jay Z, because they are some people from that same era. One, Jay Z ain't about to do nice fucking versus battles. <laughs> Jay Z ain't about to do versus battles. <laughs> Two, DMX, bro, like you. Yeah, what? Yeah. What? You know how many hits Jay Z got? Right. Even though DMX, DMX is a great got boy, dog. Jim, you know, come on, wonderful. DMX is a legend. Wonderful. But if y'all really go song for song, you can't play that fight, dog. <laughs> and then, then Jay Z was always more commercial than you. Yeah, dog. That makes me cool, son. Yeah, <laughs> be bro. cool, son. You know, you know who people will watch a Drake versus Jay Z versus niggas will watch that shit because that's generation versus generation. It's like, all right, yeah. hit for hit, because you are a hit maker, Drake. So yeah. hit for hit. I don't even watch a Wayne versus Drake. There's a lot of people that I would watch, but I watch a Wayne versus Jay Z. Damn yeah, right, had Wayne, I, Wayne I, versus Drake tour. It was cool. But I mean, like a versus battle though. Yeah, they was going like hip hop on stage. Yeah, they didn't know was, that. It was called Drake versus Lil Wayne. You miss me. That's pretty cool. I know they made money though. That, that yeah. was yeah. Well, it, it was it, it was hype. It oh, was, it, it was hype. I know that. There's like footage money. out there. Cause did y'all see that comparison? It was like okay. Who uh, who which which one um did more Jay Z whose proteges did bigger? It put Jay Z and it was uh, Rihanna and Kanye. And then Wayne it was Drake and Nicki. I was it was hard for me to decide. That's a hard one. I was like damn, uh, it's hard. That's that's a very hard damn. one. Damn, I went with Jay Z because what I'm going with Jay Z because Rihanna is yeah, such a fucking so powerhouse. She's, she 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 eclipses Nicki. Nick, yeah. She eclipses Nicki, and then without Kanye you would have no Drake. Uh -huh. Drake's instant influences are like, you know, he, he often says it is Wayne, it's Kanye. But Nicki is so iconic in the rap. She is, but yo, but it's, it's, that's why it's a hard decision. Like, I'm not shortchanging. Like, before Rihanna got big, Nicki got big. Rihanna on some crazy shit, though. Like, Rihanna. Like, now! Rihanna, Rihanna was big. So big. Rihanna, Nicki was, Rihanna was bigger before Nicki. What you talking about? I feel like Nicki became no. bigger time. Rihanna, Rihanna was, was like, big so before crossover. Nicki. Yeah, like, when Nicki got that Rihanna feature, that was a big deal for Nicki. Yeah, that yeah, was a big out, deal. Big, like on like a world scale. Because Jay Z found yeah. it. So when he found like she changed her style a couple of times, but when Jay Z found but it, I mean, she was always a number one artist. I mean like it was when it comes to hits. She had a few downtime, but no, Rihanna's a powerhouse by herself. Then you say Kanye West, the he's a billionaire now. We were supposed to talk about that, but we didn't. He's a fucking billionaire. billionaire. Three billion. Three billion. He had to he had to freaking tell Forbes. Like, nah, I'm not just a billionaire. I have three billion. Three billion. Three point two to be exact. Yeah, so Nigga, cool. what? So it's like Jay Z kinda win that one for me between them two, even though Nicki and Drake Drake by itself is his own problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But that was an interesting thing. I mean, what it should have been up there is Drake and Pusha T. But Kanye West people and shit like that. Drake and put what? Like for good music, like this should have been like, all right, Drake and Kanye West. And for our squads. And put Drake who people he put on, which I don't think Drake can put on nobody on. Huh? Drake, uh, the weekend. Yeah, Drake is like, yeah, Drake is halfway responsible for a few people. Yeah, like, you know what I mean, like, yeah. like, yeah, because he did give that. the weekend a lot of shine. Uh, he did give Party Next Door a lot of shine, but he also took a lot of their songs and shit, like, and made them his. Like, if Buku shit go down with that whole little deal. But anyway, five year old boy pulled over in Utah while driving to California to buy a Lamborghini. I smoke with the wow. cigarettes. I I smoke with cigarette sticks. <laughs> 
Took three minutes. Smoking with cigarettes. A five-year-old boy from Utah wanted his mother to buy him a Lamborghini, and since she refused, he got in her car and attempted to drive to California himself to purchase one. I'm like, how is a five-year-old? What kind of fucking savant are you? Like, right. conceptualizing boy, any of this. I grew up listening to Mozart. Said, I want a Lambo. And I'm going to drive your car. The child's planned multi-state journey, however, ended roughly five minutes after he took the car when a Utah Highway Patrol trooper pulled him over on the freeway Monday around noon. In a dash cam video released by the department, the SUV the boy is driving is seen weaving across the freeway as cars and semi-trucks whiz past. The child pulls over to the shoulder of the road after the trooper activates his sirens. How old are you? You five years old, the trooper's heard saying? Wow. Where did you learn to drive a car? For real, nigga, you can drive like that, you can pull over? The boy said he had left his home in Ogden after he got into an argument with his mother because he wanted a Lamborghini and she told him no. He decided he'd take the car and go to California to buy one himself. He might have been short on the purchase amount as he only had $3 in his pocket. The luxurious sports car, oh my God, this is fucking crazy. That's rich nigga. That man said, I'm going to get me a lamb. Bruh, like, got a stunt. how smart are you, kid? Yeah, you got to be some kind of little, you know, Smarty. Like, bro, at five, I, I can't even imagine thinking about any of that. Like, you moved the car to the highway? And you drove somewhere, and in your mind? And somewhere, I'm, I'm kind of proud of you. Because your intelligence level has reached to a point where you could pull over when a cop asks you to. And the fact that you could be like, I have a full thought to say, I'm going to take this car myself. Now, yeah. I'm a little scared of you. Because the fact that you're going to drive this car means that one day you might do something to me. Because you didn't put your mind something to it. You took my shit. It's like you're impressive, but you're using your powers for evil. Right, you're yeah. evil. Like, so you I would just measure him. And we, I would just put it to good use. <laughs> like, all right, bro, you a genius? All right, bro, look, bro, you about to learn every instrument. All right, you about to learn this, that. You know, just make him a powerhouse. My dog said the exact perfect word. Nurture I'm going to nurture this I'm motherfucker. Nurture this. Yes, I can nurture get with that. Because uh, otherwise, you know, we... Because what else you look at it like, dog, honestly. Number one, you say you got an argument and you took the car. You took the car. At some part of me feel like this has got to be fake. Cause like you took it, you drove it. Like that was your girlfriend. Like, like, well, give me this cup. Out of here. <laughs> <laughs> buy me a lamb. <laughs> I only got three dollars. Fuck it. They gonna take this three. <laughs> they gonna take this three. And that's gonna be it. Thanks, my dude. Thanks, Key. Appreciate right, you. Uh, and last up in the dose. I mean, uh, in a no, huh? Uh, this white rapper gets his shit rocked after saying nigga during a rap battle. Oh, uh, yeah. He's Why stupid. This nigga trying to be hard like that. Just he, stuck his toe, he stuck his toe in the water. I just want to play the video because I didn't see the video and I thought it would be funny to watch. It is funny. And the nigga, nigga did, he didn't drop him, but he rocked him. Oh, you saw it already? Yeah, I've been seeing it too. Oh, shit. I never saw it. Now they're not playing the video, so I might have to go to YouTube. I, I don't watch it. murder videos, but I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I don't mind watching them niggas get beat up. Especially as long for, as it's justified. It's, it's, Right out my mouth, yeah. especially for a just cause. I see, like when I watch niggas jump a nigga that like beat up their somebody's sister or something, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't mind this kind of jumping. Hmm. This yeah. is the kind of jumping I like. I don't like when niggas jumping because like some dumb shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my sister was saying the jumping, nigga. This is an old fashioned ass work from the family. From the family. Boy, no, no murder. Ooh, all that looks so good. I'm hungry as fuck. Me too. Chicken, chicken, man. Uh, I hate all the time. Nobody came in over your shoulders. You know, I get old school bumpers. Right. Shoulders still, shoulders still. Box him up. You want the day to blame him in the holy field? Either way. Either way. What else? Be present at the end. Day to blame, holy field. So I got magic in these hands. I ain't like these other battle rappers. They talk too much. Then I can't use that in this bag. My nigga, I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Y'all uh, some fools for stopping them. That was underwhelming. No, no, you're right. He could have hit him harder, but they stopped him. But no, fuck that. I'm with the black man. No, fuck that. No, no nigga. Out, no, nigga. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck, son. Thank you. That, that, you, you that, that was only, that, if you didn't speak him, that, you already lost a battle, dog. Yeah. The thing is, you lost real nigga respect. Right. You know what I'm saying? The man right. said, y'all say I can't say it, and I'm going to say it. Yeah. So them niggas, de- but that niggas defending the white boy, telling the black nigga, hold up, hold up. I'm like, no, nigga. All y'all should be looking at that white boy like, hold up, nigga. Y'all ain't got to beat his ass yeah, necessarily. Listen, listen, listen. listen. He can listen, get rough. Listen, but listen. I ain't see no energy. Not nah, none. But it wasn't nothing, y'all. I'm going to fuck. I'm going to fuck, Joe. It's a battle. You, think? you know what I'm saying, Joe? I do. I 100% do. Go on hit level. The, hit the TV. Uh, the, the, the pop button. It's more the top. 
Yeah. Like I understand, I understand, but on a level of like you gotta like stop the fight because that shit can get violent and start shooting. No, so, I. So you gotta like break that shit up, and then after that, then it's like because we don't see what the rest of the video does. I want to know what happens after those thirty two seconds where it stops. What did the rest of? Because I felt like your boy who was like looked like he was running the shit was about to be like, hold on, my nigga. We All right. you know. So this, this is what I say instead. If there were any motherfuckers defending that white rapper, I got a problem with them. Right. Because that'd be some cool shit to me. Son. Yeah. Because right. I'm like, I don't feel no way about, especially since I came out. He even tried to even smooth it. Yeah. He said, it make me, yeah, that's premeditated yeah. murder. Uh -huh. It that make boy, me this boy talk too much. Told me I can't say the N word. My nigga. Like, I was like, son, like, if you didn't get stuck right there, son, son. I don't give a fuck. Because the thing is, like, he like, lucky that's, that's all he got. They got the other battle rapper who came out talking he about lucky the girl that's daughter. all he got. Right. He got let off lighter. That's all he and, and that got. That is all he got because I would have waited for that boy after the thing. I would have shown how much a nigga I am with that ski mask on. He didn't Took get his dome rocked. No, he didn't. Your boy kind of stuck him. His, his Your boy just stuck him just off the stand of respect. I got to do something. Yeah. But but he should have got knocked. You hear me? But if you could, but it would have been. Mm. No. He should have got motherfucking knocked, G. He um, tried like, it. I don't give a fuck who you is in the rap game, dog. If you white, you try to pull that card, I feel like that should always be the outcome every time. Your dome should get rocked in some kind of capacity. Bro. Yeah, something. That has to be punishment. Just don't be doing that. If I'm ever in a battle, do dog, and a white rapper come to me and be like, they said I can't say the N word. Nigga, please. Bip, 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 bip. Before that boy get the word nigga, bip, 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 bip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no matter what race of person, like I you mean, like, that son, I like come on, son, this is, like come on, dog. Look, we rapping, dog, and but and we talking some real shit. We may be real gangsters, dog, but don't let this off on. You know what I'm saying? Get you fucked up out here, my nigga. There's disrespect, yeah. and then there's disrespect, and then you you cross right. the line. They got certain lines, dog. Mm -hmm. Like even if I'm a battle rapper or something, like mm -hmm. like that's my fucking thing. Like no matter what race dude I'm fucking rapping, like I'm not gonna call him like their racial slur, you know. Spit goop, you know, things right, like that. Right. Like, I'm not gonna call you that. I might rib you and things like that, but I mean, if I'm white, son, like, I'm not gonna go there. And I'm saying, even specifically, bro, specifically of all of them, even because there's somebody who can probably inter intellectually um, debate why within the minorities you can whatever. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. I don't give a fuck about none of that anyway. Yeah. But specifically, if you're a white boy, you know, you ain't got no, you ain't got no toe in, a room in the back. Yeah. You ain't got you no have some kind of respect. Fuck you have fuck no fuck. toe. Like yeah. I understand the disrespect you want for your for your uh, adversary, mm -hmm. but, but you disrespect you us have, all, right? You, you should have more respect yeah. for the room. You disrespect mm -hmm. no, you should have more respect for the culture that you're a part of. Right. That's yeah. allowing you That's to on. take a part of. Come on, you should have more respect for that. It's not about the fact that you want to get dirty with your adversary. You did. People get dirty and grab his battle rap, like all like time. the case when you bought the case with the dude was talking about the dude's daughter, mm -hmm. which he went way below the belt, mm -hmm. and people are like that's fucked up. And I, I agree, dog. You can say it's fucked up, but the thing is, and some people say that's not battle rap. I'm like no. But that is battle that rap. That is battle that rap. Just, he just the grimiest part of battle rap. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And peep this though. out. And also still, if that nigga would have snuck him for pump and for somebody nobody would have been mad at that. Right, nobody would have been mad at that. And that's all I'm saying. Right. shit that was right. worthy of a sneak. Right, Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, that's it. He's old yeah. a snucking. Yeah, you know I mean, cause that's you know the thing saying? too. If somebody tried to defend and be like, if no, nigga, nigga saying ain't nigga ain't saying nigga says it's part of it. It's the most grimy part of battle rap. But, but you gotta got, take in. They got consequences. But battle rap is still no matter. We talk about the top of this about the form of hip hop. It's still black. And like y'all just both said, you're a guest. Yeah, you're not a guest. culture. You're a guest. Dog, dog. We may even fight or not. Or we may not fight. You did. No matter how grimy black people get with black people, you should know as a white person coming in. What button you what, know you, that yeah. you never should press? Right. I don't give a fuck what it is, dog. Or like, oh, oh, like what niggas told you about, dog. You, I don't give a fuck what your black friends allowed you in your hood circle, dog. In this room, like you said, you're a guest at the table, dog. Chill out. Chill you know the what fuck saying? out. Eat nigga. the food, enjoy that shit, rib around, have a little fun. But that's it, son. That's it. And the and I mean honestly, dude, at the end of the fucking day, bro. Not saying nigga is very easy to do, though. That's the easiest thing that we ask you Right, no, you go, you go pull just that card? Don't, just don't say nigga, son. That's an easy one. Like, come you on, dog. dog. Kiki about every fucking thing else, son. We just don't want you to say fucking nigga, son. Please. Like, please. It's easy. And I don't, I'm, not even, I'm not even saying please in the manner of asking you because I don't have to ask you to say please. Like, please, no, so, like, please so I don't have to fuck you up. Exactly. Like, can we be serious? Can, can you not take me there? I don't, I don't want you to take me there because you ain't going to want... It's like Hulk. You're not going to like me when I'm angry. Right. Just don't oh, say fucking niggas. That's one of the ones I would never defend. I would never... No. 
And there's certain low blows that depl- that, that yeah. I mean, once you go low, you better expect the consequences. Right. In yep. any event, even if it's not any about problem. race. Right. Once you go low, low expect, prepare, consequences. expect consequences. And if you're ready to I, accept I, consequences, then I we all that. we all good. Let's get up out here with that hero highlight. Who's shining on? That's All right, I know, but shine on them fast because I'm fucking hungry. All right, we about to start off with Beyonce. One right. New Orleans organization will receive part of six million dollars in coronavirus aid from Beyonce. Thank Beyonce. Thank you, Beyonce. Yep. Uh, God, Beyonce has done it again. Mm-hmm. Name me of New Orleans is one of the groups. She's focusing her relief efforts on organizations that are helping communities of color that have been hit hard by the pandemic. And yeah, man, be trying to specifically fuck with New Orleans right now. Appreciate I, I love it. Thank you. Even though she's already given to other spots as well, so you yeah, know, big ups to Beyonce. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Queen. Next up, Eminem. What's that, man? What you done today, dog? Eminem donated, quote-unquote, mom spaghetti to hospital workers fighting coronavirus in Detroit. That's what's up. Rap Eminem mm-hmm. gave Detroit healthcare workers this week by distributing mom spaghetti, infam- infamously referencing his hit song, Lose Yourself. The tubs of bright red spaghetti had labels that read, Thank you, Frontline Caregivers. They were also marked with the Shady Records logo. Cool. That's Boom. what's up, dog. That Thank was you. nice, dog. Then had to give him some spaghetti. Do some good shit out Little there. Things the like that, dog. Like, I think that type of shit counts. Shouts out to Miss AOC herself, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, has personally, personally been delivering food to those in need during the crisis. Superwoman! Come on, Democratic representative of New York. I'm telling you, that lady gonna run for president, and she just might be it one day. And she's been doing this for the last few weeks on the motherfucking feet. On, like she out there like that's one thing I can always respect about any politician like if you actually or anybody with that kind of power or privilege yeah. to like when you actually on the ground mm-hmm. you're not just throwing money to a situation to talking shit but you no know, you nah, actually on the ground the work. Yeah. that's nothing nothing but respect nothing but hats off to that mm-hmm. yeah Shouts off to Rihanna. Oh God, what she's done now? My she God, it's Rihanna creates grant for domestic violence survivors amid quarantine. quarantine. That's yeah. very smart and good it's because a lot of that shit has rolled yeah, risen. Yeah, yep. a little bit. Okay, yep. Spiking domestic domestic abuse numbers are spiking since the quarantine, which very is so relevant. awful. But she's teamed with Twitter Square CEO Jack Dorsey to help domestic violence survivors with this safer at home order. I mean, um, ever since the issue city issued its safer at home order in late March. 90 people a week have been turned away from domestic violence shelters due to capacity restrictions. So to help this remedy, to help remedy this, Rihanna's Clara Lionel Foundation announced the creation of a $4.2 million grant to help those whose safety may be endangered by the city's mandate. Come on. Okay. Come on. You're baby. the one, you're the one. You're Come the on. One. Rihanna, that girl, she don't want you to And last that. up, the Obamas. Of course. Oh. Because they, Barack and Michelle Obama will deliver commencement speeches oh, yeah. for the classes for the class of 2020. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you so much. That's pretty fucking cool. That that's is amazing. That's a, that's a treat. You get Obamas, both of them. Yeah, both of them. He's like, hey y'all, we're here to talk to you. Uh, Michelle, what do you want to tell the class of 2020? And even if they split, if you get Michelle or, Bar- or Barack to speak. I am mm-hmm. first lady Michelle Obama speaking my uh I yeah, remember that and that was amazing. It she, was she was amazing, right? Yeah, was and did you speech. remember how everybody left when she left? Gone. Horrible. I mean she left fast too after her speech, they got hotter than you got to. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. Yeah. She was yeah. the first lady at the time. Yup. Yep. That's 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 we had to get her the fuck out of here. Be in and out, though. Like yeah. they gotta be all over the world at all times. Boy, right. the first lady, hell yeah, she gotta be out of there. We couldn't even have it at Dillard because of course the rain was gonna come, but also mm. that she was on a uh, line site to get shot over a hundred yards. You know what I'm saying? It's like nah, the the place too open, we can't cover her. She's still gonna be shot. I was like, damn, they got to cover like this. Man, that's why before, nothing that frustrated me about that whole administration. Like, when black people be talking about the Obamas, I'm like, y'all do know how hard up their blackness was working against them compared to any other president. Like, that was fuckery. Like, they was getting death threats just because they was black. No other, other, no other president ever had to deal with no shit like that. So, y'all need to know why the black president folks. was black. Exactly. So, that's my point. Exactly. It was like, well, they should have uh, so, known that. <laughs> so, that's my point. It's like, all the things y'all, y'all heaped on that on Barack, not even taking it. You know, as the first black president, he had so many other hurdles that he had to deal with before making this complete super black 
whatever thing you wanted him to do. Man, so, they wanted that nigga to be like, listen, They want to be Trump. They want him to be Trump, but just on some Umar shit. Yeah. And now they got his ass shot. Oh, immediately. Damn sure they got him enough. And he got years. all the black credit, but he'd have been shot. In his, in and his, then you know what niggas would say when he got shot? Man, that nigga was doing too much. That's why I got shot. He should have chilled out a little bit. Come on. Give a nigga a little Obamacare or something, start that off, and then chill out. And that's how, and that's the bullshit. That you absolutely right, man. Let's get the fuck up out of here. That was real. That's how people would have been. They're, no matter what, you couldn't win for losing with some of these haters. Fuck, man. Look yourself in the mirror. If you ain't contributing nothing positive to the space, you're a hater. Remember that. Mirror man, who's reflecting who? So this is that actor guy, Martin Bats Bradford. Thank y'all for listening to the show. Follow me at Mr. Bats. Spell it, Mr. Out. You're going to find another cat. But on Facebook, everywhere else is Martin Bats Bradford. Uh, hit us up at flywithbats at gmail.com. We want you to be part of the conversation. Follow us on Instagram at the Fly with Bats Show. That's where you're going to be getting the visual clips of us doing our shenanigans and getting into all the things that we get into. For and, sure. of, and of course, the Flower Bad Show is just a modicum of what happens on the podcast. If you're a podcast listener, you get the full-blown, uncensored, potty mouth, pothead podcasters full session. You heard me? You heard me. For this episode, man, I'm flying out. Yep. It's D-Mac, man. Fuck with me. Instagram, frenchbird.care. Instagram at your dig brand and your dig brand.com. That's it. Peace. Posse Juan, it's your boy Alpha Joe, fresh out of the gumbo, still deep in the room. And if you're out, out in the streets and you're, and you're looking, looking for me, me, you can find me on IG Alpha Joe, no East, uh, 504. I gotta go pee pee. <laughs> fuck with y'all niggas later, man. Side B, man, fuck the police. That's fuck, how we fuck. treat them. Yep, yeah, yeah. By, by way, way out of jail, but we, we can't, can't buy, buy freedom. We buy, buy a lot, lot of clothes, but we don't really need them. Things, things we, we buy, buy to cover up what's inside. Because they, they made us hate ourselves and buy, love, love their wealth. That's, that's why. why. Shorty's hollering where the ball is at. Drug dealer by Jordan, crackhead by crack. And the white man get paid off for of all of that. You know what makes me mad about Kanye West and his fucking clothing line? How you make that shit so expensive? And then be like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know we buy shit, dog. Like, you could have made it look cheaper than that. You didn't have to make Yeezus $300, dog, for a bunch of holes on a shirt. Nobody likes to buy cheap clothes. People like to buy expensive clothes. They want to feel expensive, huh? Yes. And the white man get paid off for of all, all of that. that. Oh, cool. Fuck. Collars, chasing green dollars. No worry about tomorrow, we gon' party tonight. Whether you work a nine to five or ten to six, just know that living life is a true benefit. So when it's time to clock out, it's time to rock out. Throw a party in your neighborhood and bring the block out. Let's take alcohol shots until we pass out. But when the cops come, we got to smash out. But listen on a serious note, don't let your workforce determine your happiness. After the first, you probably still be in debt. So live your life with no regrets. You heard me, money doesn't equal success. Nope, success doesn't last if you're stressed. Nope, and you're too blessed to be stressed. So please have a vibe, you can God bless. For my blue collars, chasing green dollars. Don't worry about tomorrow, we gon' party tonight. So get on down on the dead flow. Got your shiny by the hand, let her know that she the one. So get on down on the dead flow. I got your man by the hand, let her know that he the one. So get on down on the dead flow. Everybody try to have blue collars. Hey, hey, this is for the blue collars, chasing green dollars. Even cashmere's get grass stains. Champagne won't change on the damn pain. Nope, nope, you know, nope, 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 nope. So keep hustling, don't stop grinding. Whether you're serving food or let the shoe shine.